All right, fans, we're here for, we're here in Harrison, Arkansas tonight at Pioneer Pavilion. We're going to have the University of Arkansas Casa Tot, Lady Colts taking on the Lady Pioneers from North Ark College here in Harrison. The starters for Casa Tot tonight will be number 10, Jara Cotton, number 11, Kiana Holly, number 30, Samaya Smith, number 33, Hannah McLean. And number 35, Karina Fulbright. They will be your starters here tonight for the North Ark or for the uh, University of Casatot. And we will take a break for the national anthem. And for the hometown, North Arkansas Lady Pioneers, Kaylee Patrick, number one. She's a guard. She's out of Valley Springs, Arkansas. She's a sophomore, and she is 5'6". Abby Hodges, number 10. She's a guard, a sophomore, 5'5", out of Bergman, Arkansas. Number 11, Galen Harris, another guard, freshman, 5'3", Nima Vista, Arkansas. Number 33, Carson Edwards. She's a she's a power forward. She's a sophomore. She's 6'1. She's from Berkman, Arkansas. Also, and to round it out, it'll be number 34, Sydney Standridge. She's a forward. She's a freshman. She's six foot, and she's from Clinton, Arkansas. These two teams are meeting in this conference. Uh, the first for the first time in conference play this year, and they'll have another matchup next month in, in Locksburg. We'll play four quarters here today, four 10 minute quarters, and we'll get this started momentarily. We'll take a quick break and come back with the action. Carson Edwards is going to jump into the circle. She's going to do this jump tonight. And for Casa Todd, it'll be Karina Fulbright as she gets it started. Lady Colts will control the action here as they'll go to the – they'll shoot at the north – at the south end of the gym tonight. It'll go, The ball will go inside to number 10, Jara Cotton. It'll come down to Fulbright. Now over to number 11, Kiana Holly. Out to number 33, Hannah McLean. Gets it back inside to Fulbright. A foul's going to be called. This looks like it'll be on Carson Edwards, and it will be. It'll be her first foul of the night. They'll inbound underneath their own goal, the Lady Colts will. Now this ball gets set to be brought in Fulbright. 
Back to number 11, Holly. Down to number 10. Cotton puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebound. And now if the ball will be taken away by the Lady Pioneers, Hodges will bring it up the court with after pass from Edwards. Now Hodges on the right side of the floor gets it to Kaylee Patrick, number one. Patrick looks to shoot. Now she passes across court. She'll get it to Garris. Garris will put up the shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by McLean. McLean will get the ball in the hands of Holly back over to Cotton. I'm sorry, back over to Smith. The ball will be knocked out of bounds by the Lady Pioneers. I just got her hand on it, but she was only able to knock it out. They'll inbound from the corner in front of the Lady Pioneer bench. Smith will get this in. I'm sorry, Holly gets it in. Smith now with the basketball. Smith with the ball again from Holly. Over to Cotton. Cotton will get it out to McLean. She'll miss the shot. Rebound will come down to Edwards, to Patrick, now to Garris, and Garris will bring it up and take up position on the left side. Over to Patrick. Patrick back to Hodges. Hodges behind the three-point line. Gets it into Standridge. She'll drive the lane and put up a shot. It's no good. Edwards had her hands on the rebound. Now we're going to have a jump ball on the floor as – Kaylee Patrick will tie up number 10, Cotton. Possession arrow will favor the Lady Pioneers, and they will inbound from underneath their own basketball goal. 8-19 left to play in the first quarter. No score in this game, 0-0. As we get set for the inbound pass here. Kaylee Patrick will inbound it. Hodges on the right, Garris on the left, Carson and, Ed, and Standridge in the high post. And here we go. Standridge and Edwards cut to the basketball goal. She, Edwards will get the pass. She puts up the basket. It looks like the foul will be called against number 10, Jara Cotton. It'll be her first foul of the game. Both teams have one team foul now. The difference is Edwards is going to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Her first free throw is coming up. Hits the back of the iron, bounces out, and no good. Edwards will regroup and step back into the free throw line and get ready for her second shot. Second shot is up, and it's perfect. Falls through. One to zero. Lady Pioneers take the first lead of the ball game. Smith over to Cotton. Cotton has the ball knocked away, picked up by number 33, McLean. Back to number 11, Holly. Now it's down in the low post. The shot goes up by number 10, Cotton. Lady Pioneers come out of there with it. Hodges goes from left to right in the front court. She'll get the ball over to Kaylee Patrick. She'll put up a three-point shot, and she's going to drain that. Four to zero. 7.41 remaining in the first period. Lady Pioneers lead. On the other end for offense, Cossetot will set up. Smith with the basketball. And out in the center of the floor, she get it over to Cotton, back to McLean, down inside to Fulbright. Fulbright tries to make the pass. It'll be taken away by Kaylee Patrick. Back down the floor to Abby Hodges, puts up a shot over the rim and everything. Rebounded by Holly. Back down on the other end, she kicks it up to McLean. And McLean will put up a shot. It's good. Patrick will bring this back up the left side of the floor. She'll be trailed by Edwards. Now Edwards will go down into the low post. Pass to Edwards. She puts up a shot from the right side. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by Holly and then brought back up the floor by McLean. McLean will get the ball to Cotton. Shot goes up from number 11, Holly. It is no good and goes out of bounds. Lady Pioneers will inbound underneath the Lady Colts basket. Checking in now will be number 44, Sophia Reyes. Reyes will replace Fulbright. Patrick with the basketball on the right side. She's going to dribble inside, get it to Edwards, back out to Standridge, who puts up a jumper just inside the three-point line. It's tipped by Edwards to 
Standridge, she'll put it up from about 10 feet away. It's good. She's going to free throw line to shoot a free throw. Foul is on number 11, Holly. It'll be her first foul of the ball game. Second team foul for Cossetot, and Standridge's free throw is up and in. Seven to two with 619 remaining in the first period. The Lady Pioneers lead the Lady Colts. McLean with the basketball. Kaylee Patrick with the steal back down the floor. She's going to put it up and in on the right-hand side. Easy layup there for Patrick. Nine to two. Six minutes remaining in the first period. McLean quickly back up the floor, guarded by Garris. Now it'll be Cotton shooting towards the basketball go. She'll miss. Reyes with the rebound. She gets it out to Holly, and Holly will get it to McLean. Into Reyes. She puts up a shot from the free throw line. It's good. Nine to four. Hodges comes back up the right side of the floor now. She's on the magnus symbol, comes over to the Pioneer. Now she'll go back towards the right, get a pass inside to Edwards. It'll be knocked away. Now the loose ball is going to go out of bounds, and it'll go out of bounds off of Cossetot. Checking out will be McLean. And checking in for McLean will be number one, Victoria Burns. Now we're going to have a we're going to have the ball out of bounds. It'll be off of Cossetot, and they were going for both of them were going for the ball at the same time. Patrick will get set to throw this in. She gets it into Hodges. Hodges is guarded by Cotton, guarded by Cotton. She's going to put up a mid-range jumper from about 14 feet. It's good. 11 to four. Lady Pioneers lead Cossetot with five minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Holly with the basketball over to Burns. Burns will miss the shot, but it'll be rebounded by number 33, McLean. The pass inside will be tipped away, and Hodges will come up with that basketball. Back on the other end, Edwards is on the left side. Hodges will be fouled, and this is she's going to be fouled by Burns. They have no choice but to call that foul. It'll be her first foul of this ball game. A little too aggressive there. Checking in for Lady Pioneers. She'll check in for Carson Edwards. It'll be Samantha George, number 43 from Blue Eye. Kaylee Patrick looks to get the ball in, gets it to Garris. Garris cuts towards the lane, she tries to pass it down to Standridge. Standridge fumbles the basketball, and it'll be brought up the floor by Cotton. Cotton will be guarded by Patrick as she puts up a shot that's going to miss everything and go out of bounds. 11-4 to 4 is the score. 4.36 remaining here at Pioneer Pavilion in Harrison, Arkansas. Patrick gets it into Garris. Garris will bring it up the center of the floor. Now she'll go to the left, kicks it out to Hodges. Hodges will get it, kick it over cross court to Patrick. She'll put up a three-point shot that's no good. Garris will come down with that loose rebound after the tip from Hodges. Gets inside for Patrick, and she puts it up and in from in the lane within about six feet, 13 to four. They put up a nine-point lead so far. Fulbright's checked back in. Now Fulbright and Ray is on the floor at the same time, and the ball will go through the hands of McLean as she tried to think about what she was doing and looked like she wanted to dribble the ball before she got it. In football, they say you, take, you never take your eyes off the football, so I'd say the same thing for basketball. Garris with the ball on the right side. Now she'll come towards the center of the floor, over to Hodges on the left. Hodges with the basketball double team. Now she gets it back to Garris. Garris gets it out to Patrick. Patrick looks to drive the baseline. She will pull it back out, get it down to George, who will put up the shot. Ball will be knocked away as Fulbright came down with the rebound. Now it'll be Holly bringing it back down the floor. She'll get it over to McLean, back to Holly, and then they'll, they'll reset. Burns now with the basketball as she gets ready to set that offense up into Reyes. Reyes just outside the free throw line, kicks it back out to McLean. McLean down to Fulbright. Fulbright passes it out to Holly. She'll put up a deep three-point shot. It's no good. Patrick comes down with the rebound in front of Fulbright. Now Patrick back down the floor. She comes down the center, gets in the lane, passes it off to Standridge. Standridge will get it out to Garris. She'll put up a deep three. It's off the rim. Hodges will save it. 
She'll save it back to George. George will get the ball over to Patrick. She looks at a three, gets Reyes to charge for her, and then she puts up a shot inside about 10 feet away. Foul's going to be called. Foul will be called on number 11. That'll be called on Kiana Holly. It'll be her second personal foul. She'll check out of the game. Checking in now will be number three, Alexa Hernandez, and number 20, Sierra Shaw, Sierra Shaw. Patrick at the line to shoot two free throws. Her first free throw is up. Hits the back of the iron, swings towards the front of the net as it falls through. 14-4 to four is your score. 2.53 remaining in the first period. Second shot by Patrick. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 2.53, 15-4. Burns brings the ball up the right side. She'll go back to the center. Now she'll go back to the, towards the right side. She's got Reyes in the lane. Over to Shaw. Shaw will dribble it. Now she'll pick up her dribble and get it into Reyes. She'll spin and put up a shot. It'll go over. It'll hit the graze the rim as it goes over on the left side. Now Kessa Willis. Looked like she might have traveled with the ball, but no call. It'll go out to Standridge. She'll put up a shot. It'll go off the inside of the rim. No good. Reyes with the rebound. Over to Burns. Burns will bring it back up the center of the floor. Burns kicks it over to the left side to Hernandez. Hernandez will get in the lane, lose, lose the basketball. Out to Fulbright from Burns as she picked it up. Now back to Burns. Burns will kick it back to Fulbright across the court to Shaw. Now Shaw looks at, gets it to Burns. She'll hand it to her. She'll go... Tries to go down the left side of the lane. Four on the shot clock. They've got to get it up. Now they're going to call traveling. Traveling is the call. It'll turn it back over to the Lady Pioneers. Kaylee Patrick will inbound this with 155 remaining in the first period and an 11-point lead, 15-4. to four. Edwards gets set to come back into this game. Ball is passed down to Standridge, who puts up a shot from the right side. It's no good. We've got a foul called. Foul's going to be called against Abby Hodges. It'll be her first foul of the ball game. Second team foul. Edwards checks back in, and she'll check in for Standridge. Shaw will throw this into Burns, and Burns will bring it up the floor. She's coming across the Pioneer symbol, headed left, out to Hernandez, over to Shaw. Now Shaw gets it out to Fulbright. Fulbright will... I'm sorry, that's Zakiah Tyler. Zakiah Tyler, number 45. Personal foul will be called on Samantha George. That'll be her first personal. Burns will get this ball into Hernandez, out to Shaw. Shaw will try to get it. She gets it back into Hernandez. Hernandez tries to get it down to... Reyes, it'll go out of bounds as Edwards tried to save that. It would have been out on the Lady Pioneers anyway as it hit Samantha George. Now Burns will get set to throw this back in. 12 on the shot clock. Tyler with the basketball puts up a deep shot. No good. Patrick comes up with it. Down to Edwards. Edwards puts up a layup on the right side. It's good. 17-4. to four. Edwards Ran the floor, and Patrick rewarded her. Burns with the basketball. Burns dribbles to the left, gets it over to Tyler. Tyler comes right. Tyler doesn't have anybody to pass to. Picked up her dribble across court to Burns. Now Burns will try to dribble and penetrate. Gets in the lane, throws up a shot. It hits the glass to the, to the front of the rim and falls through. Now Patrick will bring it back up with under a minute to play. Willis with the basketball. Patrick didn't see the ball coming, and Willis threw that ball out of bounds. Coach Howard holds his hands up and says, what was that? Burns will bring the ball back up the floor for the Lady Colts. She gets it to Tyler, to Hernandez on the left side. She'll drive the baseline, tries to put up a shot. She does spin and put up a shot. It's good. Cuts the lead to 17-8, to 18 or 17 seconds remaining, over to Patrick. Patrick will get it back to Hodges. Hodges looks at a three. She'll pass it back to Patrick, who puts up a three-point shot that's no good. 
It's off of the fingertips of George. Under three to play. Tyler with the basketball puts up a shot. No good, no foul. We're going to end the first period with a 17 to eight score and we'll be right back. Lady Pioneers play a nice first quarter here, and they take the lead. It's 17 to 8 as we start the second period. Cossatot will have the inbound, and we will get set for that inbound pass cross court. Shaw or McLean with the basketball. Smith, I'm sorry, Smith with the basketball. On the floor will be Shaw, McLean, Smith, Fulbright, and number 10, Cotton. McLean with the ball. She'll kick it out to number 20. That'll be Shaw. And the ball will go out of bounds off of the Lady Colts. For the Lady Pioneers, we'll have Kaylee Patrick, Kessa Willis, Carson Edwards, and Sydney Standridge along with Kaylee Patrick. And they'll get set up. Now Hodge is on the left side of the floor. She'll kick it back across to Willis. Ball's tipped. Willis comes up with it. Now she's being double teamed. We're going to have a foul called, and this will be called against be called against number 10, Jara Cotton. It'll be her second personal foul, for, and it'll be Costat's first team foul in this second period. Cotton will check out, and checking back in will be Hernandez. Patrick gets it inbounds to Standridge, cross court. Over to Willis. Willis with the basketball. She'll hand it off to Patrick. Patrick dribbles, penetrates, kicks it down to Hodges on the baseline. We've got a whistle. We've got a whistle. I guess we're going to have a foul called here against. That looks like it's going to be called against number 30. That'll be Samaya Smith. Nothing on the board yet, so we won't officially say that was a foul. Ball does come into Edwards to Hodges. She puts up the shot from three-point range. It's no good. Shaw with the rebound. She gets it down to Smith. Smith all the way back down the floor, puts up a shot. It's no good. Three Lady Pioneers there for the rebound. Hodges comes up with it. Hodges to Patrick. Patrick in the lane, almost in the lane, puts up a shot from about 10 feet away. Edwards will go up and fight for that ball. Hernandez comes up with the loose ball all the way back down the other end. She'll have she'll lose the ball. She'll lose control of the ball out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lady Pioneers. Edwards went up high trying to get that rebound. Now they'll try to play more under control. Hodges with the ball. Patrick passes it in. Hodges will come from the left to the center. And now she'll come back towards the left, get a screen from Edwards. She tries to drive down to the baseline, gets it into Standridge. Standridge is going to drive with a Euro step, put it in, but the problem is the foot came down first. It's traveling against the Lady Pioneers. Shaw throws this into Smith. Smith will bring it back up the center of the basketball floor. Set up the offense. Fulbright is in the high post, now outside the three-point line. She'll get it to McLean. McLean looks at a three. Now she tries to drive the basketball rim, misses the shot. Willis with the rebound over to Hodges. To Hodges brings it back up the left, looks at the center of the floor. Now she'll take it down to the high post, put up a shot. No good. McLean with the rebound. She gets it out to Smith. Excuse me. 
Smith will drive the drive the length of the floor, gets it to Shaw. McClain. McClain puts up a deep three-point shot. It'll rim out. Hodges again with the rebound. She comes back up the right side of the floor. Kicks it over to Patrick. Patrick drives. Kicks it to Standridge. 12-foot jumper's good. 19-8. to 7.30 remaining in the first half. Smith back down on the other end of the floor. Hernandez over to Shaw. Shaw dribbles in, kicks it back out to McLean. McLean will dribble in. She kicks it to Shaw. Ball ends up in Fulbright's hand. She'll go around and put up a shot. It'll roll around the rim and roll off. Edwards with the rebound, brings the ball up the floor. She'll get it over to Patrick on the right side. Patrick dribbles inside, puts up a shot, and it's good. That floater was about nine feet, and she puts that up and in, 21 to eight. Samantha George gets ready to check back in for the Lady Pioneer. Smith with the basketball out on the Pioneer symbol. Passes it over to Shaw. Shaw looks to pass it inside. She's looking for Fulbright. Gets it to McLean at the free throw line. And then she'll be called. Or actually, Standridge will be called for the foul. It'll be a pushing foul. Standridge, I'm sorry, George and Garris will come in for Hodges and Carson Edwards. That'll be Standridge's first foul of this ball game. It's not a shooting foul, and they'll inbound. The Colts will inbound under their own bench. We're going to have over and back called here. Actually, I'm sorry. You you can throw it into backcourt on a on an inbound pass. Smith gets it into Fulbright. Fulbright too deep under the goal, and she will actually step on the baseline. So it'll be back to the Lady Pioneers. The pass was too deep, and she couldn't control where she stepped. Now Patrick will get set to throw this in. She'll throw it into Garris. Burns is going to come back into this game for It looks like Burns is going to come in for number 30. Shot is up anyway by the Lady Pioneers. It's no good. McLean comes out of there with the basketball. And it'll be back on this other end. She's Smith is going to the going to the locker room, so I'm assuming she had some blood that she had to get cleared up. Now Garris with the ball. It's knocked away. Burns. Burns doesn't have numbers, so she'll pull it back out. Fulbright tips the ball. It'll go to Shaw. Shaw puts up a three-point shot. It's off the rim. No good. Patrick will come down with the with the rebound. Burns will antagonize her, knock the ball away temporarily. Willis with the ball. She'll get it over to Garris. Inside, in the low post on the uh, left-hand side to George. Over to Standridge with the shot. Garris gets the rebound and puts it back up. She goes to the floor on a block, clean block. Now Hernandez with the foot with the basketball on the other end of the floor. Burns will dribble to the right. Now she'll pass it to Shaw inside to McLean in the high post. Down in the low post to Fulbright. She'll put it up and in on the right-hand side. 21-10 to 10 is your score. Five minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half. Patrick brings it up the right side. Patrick kicks it in the high post to George. She puts up a shot. It's no good. Now Standridge with the ball. Had three people on her. They're going to call a jump ball. But the possession arrow is going to favor the Lady Pioneers. Fulbright will check out, and Reyes checks back in. Patrick in, gets set to inbound this. She finds Garris out at the top of the three-point line, puts up the shot. It's no good. Rebound will come down to George. She puts it back up and in. She just took that right back up and muscled it in. 23-10 to 10 is your score. 4.53 remaining in the first half. Burns over to Shaw. Shaw looking inside. She gets it to McLean in the high post. Down to Reyes. Reyes wants to put up a shot. Kicks it back out to Burns. Over to Shaw. McLean. Hernandez is over there on the left wing. She puts it up. Shot is going to bounce off the rim. Be rebounded by Reyes and back up and in on the left side. Coach Howard wants over the back, but they're not going to change the call now. Garris on the other end. Kicks it out to Patrick. Patrick kicks it over to Willis. To Standridge, she puts up a shot. It's no good. Garris gets the rebound. No one blocked her out. 
Willis to Patrick. Now Patrick will have the ball temporarily knocked away by McLean. Patrick drives in, kicks it out to George. George is going to be fouled, or a foul is going to be called. We'll see what this is on. It'll be called on Kaylee Patrick. They're going to call charging. That'll be her first foul of the game, second team foul for North Ark in this second period. Costot has one team foul. Burns gets it over Hernandez. Hernandez throws it down low to no one except for Garris. Garris will pick it up and start bringing it back down the right side to the center of the floor. Over to Willis. Willis will catch a player running, and she'll have the – now we've got a scrum on the floor as George – couldn't take that pass, and when it when it when it was fumbled, it was a jump ball at that point with all the hands on it. Hodges and Edwards will check in for Willis and George. 23-12, 340 remaining in the first half. Burns will bring this ball up the floor over to Shaw. Shaw's on the right side inside in the high post to McLean. McLean will try to go down the left side of the lane. And she's going to be called for charging as Patrick takes the charge. McLean's first foul of the ball game is a charge. Now we're going to have Hodges bringing this up the right side of the floor. Now she'll switch directions, come to the center. From the center, she'll pass it to Garris on the right side. Garris has got Patrick over here in the left corner. Back to Hodges. Hodges puts up a three-point shot. It'll rim out, and it'll come down to Shaw. Shaw with the basketball, guarded by Patrick. Patrick takes the ball away from her. Now Shaw takes it back. Burns comes back down the floor. She kicks it out on the left side to Hernandez over to McLean, who puts up a three-point shot from NBA range, and it's good. 23-15, 254 remaining in the first half. Garris looks to drive the lane. Now she'll kick it out to Hodges. Hodges will kick it out to Patrick. Patrick will put up a three-point shot, and she'll drain the bottom of the net. 240, 26-15. We've got 240 remaining in this first half. McLean from Burns. Reyes and Standridge battling inside. Three-point shot by Hernandez is good. Timeout on the floor. We'll take the timeout with them and be right back. Timeout's coming to an end. Coach Howard and, and uh, Colts coach is giving their last seconds of uh, in- instruction. Back out on the floor, they, t- they come. Kaylee Patrick will inbound this on the south end of the gym. She'll throw it into Garris. Garris will bring it up the floor. She's got Hodges on the left side, and the left low post is Standridge. Edwards in the low low post on the right. Garris with the basketball. She gets it into Standridge in the high post. Now Edwards. Edwards is going to be fouled by number 20, Shaw. That'll be on Sierra Shaw, and I believe that'll be her first foul of the game. It is her first foul. Patrick will get set to inbound this. Hodges will take the inbound pass, kick it back down to Patrick in the left corner. Hodges comes down with the rebound. Now Burns will take it away from her, and we're going to have a jump ball on the floor between Standridge and McLean. Possession arrow is going to favor the Lady Pioneers, and they'll throw it in from their own baseline. This time it'll be Garris throwing the ball in. She'll get it into Patrick behind the three-point line. Now Patrick will drive to the right side, kick it out to Hodges, puts up a three-point shot. It'll rattle out. McLean comes down with that rebound. She'll get the ball over to Burns so she can bring it back up the floor. Kessa Willis gets ready to check back in for the Lady Pioneers. McLean down to Reyes. Reyes will spin and put up a shot. It's no good off the mark. 
Garris with the rebound and back down the floor. All the way down to Standridge, who puts up a shot. It's partially blocked by Shaw. Patrick with the steal, puts up a hook shot. It's good. 28-18, 10-point lead for the Lady Pioneers. 120 to play in the first half. Burns with the ball over to Hernandez on the left side. Inside to Reyes at the free throw line. She'll put up a shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by McLean, and then it'll be a foul called, it looks like, on Edwards. Edwards had a clean block there, but they're going to say that she got him with the body, and that'll be her second personal foul of this ball game. George will check in. Willis checks in. Standrich and Hodges will check out. McLean's first free throw is up and in. It's 28-19 now. Second free throw by McLean is up. Hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back, and pops off. Hodge, uh, Willis with the rebound, and, she'll bring, and Kay, she gets it over to Patrick. Patrick will bring it back down the floor. Standridge gets ready to check back in. Willis at the free throw line. Patrick. Burns is going to try and take it away from Patrick, but she'll get the ball back. Now she'll dribble, penetrate, puts up a shot on the right side. It's no good, a little hard off the glass. Rebound comes down to Hernandez. Over to Burns. Burns brings it back down the floor to Reyes. Reyes will try to muscle her way in, puts up a shot. It'll rim around and come out. Hernandez puts it back up and in on the right side with the rebound. Patrick takes the inbound from Garris. On the other end, she's got Edwards and George in the low post. Under, they're going to try and get the last shot. About two seconds difference in the shot clock. Burns with the steal. Now, she'll go to the floor. She loses control of the basketball. It'll be a jump ball, and it'll belong to the Lady Colts from Cossatot. They'll inbound on the far side of the floor. Edwards will check out and Standridge back in. McLean gets set to throw this in. She gets it into Reyes on the left side. Reyes try, gets it back out to Burns. Burns tries to dribble and penetrate. Throws up a shot. It's no good. But it appears that she's going to be fouled. Foul will be called on number 11. That'll be on Garris. That'll be her first foul. Burns' first free throw is good. Cuts the lead to six, 28-22 with 6.3 remaining in the first half. Second shot is up and in. She cuts it to a five-point lead right before the half. Patrick will pick up this basketball, dribble it down, get inside the lane, put up a shot. It's off the glass, no good, rebounded by McLean. And we've reached halftime, 28-23 is your score. We'll be back after the half.
All right, we've got about 20 seconds before we get this tip, this second half started. Coach is still in the huddle for uh, the Lady Pioneers. How Coach Howard's going to make sure they understand they understand exactly what he wants done in this second half. On the floor for the Lady Colts will be number 30, McC uh, Smith. Number 10, Cotton. We'll have number 35, Fulbright, back on the floor. Number 11, Holly. And number 33, McLean. For the Lady Pioneers, we're going to have Garris Patrick. Garris will take the inbounds pass. Hodges, Edwards, and Standrich back on the floor. Garris with the basketball. She gets it over to Hodges on the left side. Down to Edwards. Edwards puts it up and in on the left-hand side. What a way to start the second half. Reverse layup for Edwards. 30-23. to 23. Back down on the other end. Fulbright with the basketball. Standing out by the free throw line. Gets it over to McLean on the left side. She's got Cotton on the right, but gives it up to Holly. And Holly will put up a three-point shot. It's no good. Rebounded by number 30. Smith, and she'll put it up and in on the right-hand side. Hodges with the basketball on the left side of the floor. Now she looks to dribble, gets it to the free throw line, kicks it out to Garris, over to Edwards. Edwards goes cross court to Patrick, and it'll go out of bounds. A little high for Patrick, but it'll go out of bounds and belong to the Lady Colts. 30-25 to 25 is your score, 9.07 remaining in the third period. Ball comes into Holly. Right back to Smith. Now Smith will set up the offense. McLean gets the inbound pass, or gets the pass, and Carson Edwards is going to be called for a foul. She went up to defend that pass, and then she went up to defend the shot. And we're going to have free throws here. McLean will go to the free throw line for two. It'll be Edwards' third foul of this ball game, first team foul in the third period. Shot is up, and it's good. 8.59 remaining in the third period. McLean has one more free throw. She'll hit the front of the rim, roll to the back, and pop off. Rebounded by Standridge over to Hodges. 30-26 to 26 is your score. Garris now on the left side, dribbles inside the paint. Now she'll try to get it inside to Standridge. Standridge will bounce the ball off of the baseline, and it'll be out of bounds on the Lady Pioneers. Smith will get set to throw this into Holly. Holly gets it right back to Smith, and she'll bring it up the floor. On the Pioneer symbol, inside to McLean. Edwards with her hand straight up. Now she's got to defend, puts the ball up. McLean puts the ball up, and it goes through. And she puts it up and in on the left-hand side. George gets set to check back in. Patrick with the inbound pass. Edwards on the right, in the right corner. Hodges in the left, over to Garris. Garris will dribble back and pass it to Patrick. It'll be knocked out of bounds on McLean, or by McLean. George will check in, and Edwards will check out. Patrick gets set to throw this ball in. Hodges fights through a block. Garris gets the inbound back to Patrick. Now Patrick will split two defenders, get it over to George, back out to Garris. Hodges in the high post. Double dribble is going to be called against Garris, and it'll be another turnover for the Lady Pioneers. Two-point lead, 30 to 28. Eight minutes to play in the third period. McLean with the basketball. Fulbright down in the left corner. She's going to put the ball on the floor and dribble. Gets it out to Holly over to. Smith, who puts it up from three-point range, is no good. Loose ball on the floor. Smith comes up with it. She's going to be called for traveling. She hit the floor and was sliding, and that's traveling. She didn't get timeout called in time. Kaylee Patrick gets set to throw this in from the far side of the floor, gets it to Hodges. Now she'll bring it up the right side of the floor, comes all the way across. Garris checks out, and Willis checks back in for the Lady Pioneers. Patrick has the ball knocked away by Smith. It'll be out of bounds on Smith, and, let, and Patrick will throw this in. Gets it to Hodges. Out on the Magnus symbol. Now she'll dribble. Puts up a shot from just outside the free throw line. Willis had a shot at the rebound. Comes down to Fulbright off of Willis's hand. Smith now with the ball. 
Looks at a three. Over to Holly. She puts up the three. It'll hit the front of the rim. No good. Willis with the rebound. Willis back down the floor. They got numbers. Three on two. Over to Standridge. Standridge will have to pull it back because it was too deep. Now it'll be Kaylee Patrick driving inside. She double teamed. Gets the ball to George. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul. This one looks like it'll be on number 35. Karina Fulbright, and I believe that'll be her second personal foul. It'll be her first. It's also the first team foul for Cossetot in the second half. Willis with the inbound pass, puts up the shot from eight feet out, and it's good. 32-28, 6.49 remaining in the third period. Smith over to Holly. Holly on the right-hand side, gets it to Cotton. Cotton just outside the free throw line, get it over to McLean. McLean looked at a three-point shot. Got George in the air. Now Patrick guarding Cotton. Cotton with the basketball. Loses it back out to McLean. She puts up a three-point shot. It's off the back of the iron. Long rebound to Holly. Holly puts up the shot. It's no good. Fulbright with the rebound. Fulbright muscles her way in, puts up a shot. It's no good, but foul's going to be called. Foul will be called on number 10, Hodges. She was on the other side of the, the lane. Can't believe she was called for that. Looked like it probably should have been called on Standridge, but or George, rather. First free throw by Fulbright's up and in. That'll be the second foul on Hodges, second team foul in this third period. Second free throws up and in. 30-32. to Costatot cuts it to a two-point lead for the Lady Pioneers. Patrick with the ball on the right side of the floor. She kicks it over to George. George gets it down to Standridge in the right corner, left corner. Ball's knocked away by Smith, and it'll go out of bounds. Willis will get set to throw this in. Willis will get it into Patrick out in the center of the floor. Patrick will have Hodges all the way on this right side. She'll get it to Hodges. Hodges wants to dribble and penetrate, kicks it out to Willis over to Patrick. Now Hodges, they're going to have contact. They're going to have a foul on the floor. This foul will be on, looks like it's going to be on number 35. It is. It's her second personal foul. So Fulbright will come to the bench and Reyes will come back in. Standridge throws this in. She'll get it into Hodges. Hodges out behind the three-point line. Back to Standridge. She's in the lane about eight feet and puts up a shot. No good. Hodges was trying to come down with that rebound. It'd be knocked out of bounds by McLean. Still be Lady Pioneer basketball. 19 seconds on the shot clock to shoot. Five minutes and 47 seconds remaining in this third period. Patrick will get the ball into Hodges. Hodges will dribble to the center of the floor in the lane, kick it back out to Willis. Willis cross court to Patrick. She puts up a three-point shot, and she's going to drain the bottom of the bucket. Three points for Patrick makes it a 35-30 lead for the Lady Pioneers. Holly over to Cotton. Down inside to Reyes. Reyes is going to have the ball knocked away. Turn, spin, and put up a shot. It's no good. Standridge over to Patrick. And Patrick will bring it back up the floor after that rebound by Standridge. Standridge, or Patrick tries to get inside, gets cut off. Now over to Willis. Willis gets it to Hodges on the right side. Hodges will dribble, kick it down to Standridge, who puts up a six-footer, and it's good. 37-30, 37-30, just like that. It's back out to a seven-point lead for the Lady Pioneers. Smith will bring it up the floor. Smith will look for somebody to pass this to, and she's got nobody open. Now she'll get it to Holly, and she'll cut to the right corner. They're looking inside to Reyes, out to McLean on the left side, into Reyes. Reyes outside the, three, uh, the free throw line will try and dribble down the left side of the lane and puts up a shot. It's going to get on the rim and stay there and then roll through. Patrick with the inbound from George. She'll bring the back, ball back up the floor. She's got uh, Hodges over here on the right side. Hodges will take the pass. Back to Patrick on the left. Inside, back out to Kaylee Patrick. Over to Willis, who puts up a three-point shot, and she'll drain that from the left corner. 40-32, to eight-point lead now. 
4-0-3 remaining in this third period. Smith with the basketball, calls timeout, and we'll take the timeout with them and be right back. Timeouts come to an end. We've got 3.59 to play in the third period, 40-32. to 32. Lady Pioneers lead this ball game. Cossetop will inbound in front of the scorer's table. Kaylee Patrick will guard the inbound pass. It'll come to Holly. Holly looks to get it to Smith. Over to Smith on the Pioneer symbol. Reyes sets a screen, and Smith will put up a floater that'll go through. 40-34, to 34, Lady Pioneers lead. Patrick over to Willis. Willis into Standrich at the free throw line. She puts up a shot. It's no good. Smith will come out of there with the rebound, quickly bringing it back up the left side of the floor. She'll go to the center. Now she'll go, try to go down the lane. They're going to call a blocking foul on Kaylee Patrick. She had her feet set. Coach Howard is up arguing. He's not going to win it, but it's going to be a foul against Patrick. It'll be her second personal foul. Be the third team foul in this third period, 3.30 to play. Holly gets set to throw this in. She get finally does get it into Smith. Smith will launch a three-point shot that will be off the inside of the iron. No good. Standridge comes down with the rebound, gets the ball to George, over to Patrick. Now they'll come back down the floor with the basketball. Patrick gets it to Willis on the right side. Willis will get it inside to Standridge, and she's going to turn around and have an easy layup. On the right side, 42-34, North Arc leads. Three minutes to play. Ball in the hands of McLean. Reyes cuts towards the basketball. Outside the free throw line, she's going to try to dribble and get in. Foul's going to be called on the floor away from the ball. Foul's going to be on George. That'll be her second personal foul. Fourth team foul in this third period. One more. Ball comes into Cotton. Cotton will kick it out to McLean, who will put up a three-point shot on the left side, and she'll make that. Patrick back up the right side of the floor to the center. Gets at the free throw line and kicks it back. Ball will go out of bounds off of Willis's hands. It's a low pass and should have been picked up, but was not. Smith takes the inbound from McLean. Smith on the right side of the floor. She's got Holly in the corner. Over to McLean on the left. Back to Holly. Holly looks inside. Can't get the ball in there. Kicks it cross court. And Smith will bury a three-point shot. 40 to 30, 42 to 39, 215 remaining in the third period. Hodges all the way across court in the corner to Willis. Willis on the left side. She'll kick it down to George. George will kick it back out, but a foul's going to be called. This is going to be called on number 33, McLean. It'll be her second personal foul, third team foul called against Cossatot in this third period. Patrick gets set to throw this in. She'll get, throw it to Hodges, and it'll be, it'll be thrown out of bounds, and the ball will belong to Cossetot. Klain will throw this into Smith. Smith will bring it back up the floor. 
On the right side, she'll kick it to Holly on the left. Holly will dribble down the right side of the lane, make contact, no call. George back down the floor, back down the floor with the ball over to Patrick. Patrick will dribble. She's had eyes on going inside, kicks it down to Standrich, and Standrich is going to put up a shot. She will miss the shot, but she's fouled, and the foul will be called on number 11. That'll be on Holly. That'll be her third personal foul, and quickly, Kostat now has four fouls in this third period with 140 remaining. Standards will be at the line to shoot two free throws. First free throw by Standridge is up, and beautiful shot down the bottom of the net. You made the net sing right there, and she'll have one more. Second shot is up. Hits the back of the iron and zips through. 44-39, five-point lead now for North Arc. 135 remaining in the third period. McLean almost lost that basketball. She's guarded by Standridge. Over to Holly, back to Smith. Smith tries to dribble and inside, get inside out to Reyes. Reyes dribbles and puts up a hook shot that's going to fall through the bottom of the net. Hodges brings the ball up on the right side. It's Patrick on the left. George in the low post, Standridge in the low post. Out to Willis at the center of the floor. Willis will spin. A foul is going to be called on Jara Cotton, number 10 for Cossetot. That'll be the fifth team foul. And that'll send Willis to the free throw line for a one and one. Willis has the basketball, puts the shot up. And it drains the bottom of the net after hitting the back of the iron and falling straight through. Willis' second shot is up and hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back glass and falls off. Smith with the basketball. She brings it back down the floor. Reyes with the rebound on that shot. Smith has Willis on her, dribbles inside, puts up a shot off the glass, and she'll put that through. 45-43, under a minute to play. Patrick brings it up the left side. Hodges in front of her in the corner. Willis over on the right. Gets it to Standridge, just outside the free throw line. She'll kick it out to Hodges, back to Willis, over to Patrick. Patrick will dribble, penetrate, and she'll shoot from about six feet out. No good. Rebound comes down to Smith, over to McLean. McLean at the timeline. She'll be picked up by Patrick. Timeout's going to be called by Cossetot's coach. We'll take the timeout with them. 19 seconds left in the third period. 45-43, North Arc leads. And here we go. Timeout is over. McLean gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Smith. Over to Holly. Holly on the right side gets it into Reyes. It'll be knocked away, picked up by Willis. Willis back down the floor. She'll get, kick it over to Hodges in the corner. Back to Patrick at the free throw line. Patrick down the lane, puts up the shot. It'll roll around the rim and fall through. 47-43. That'll be the end of the third period. We'll be back in a minute for the fourth period.
As we get set to start this fourth quarter, Pioneers have the Lady Pioneers have a four-point lead, 47-43. Some confusion as to who has the basketball. It'll be Cossatot opening the fourth period with the basketball. Smith will take the inbound in the backcourt. She'll come across and get it to Cotton to McLean. McLean will look inside as Fulbright's checked back in over to Holly. Smith with the basketball. She'll come back towards the center of the floor. Over to McLean. She'll try to dribble and penetrate. She'll get in there, and a charge is going to be called. Kaylee Patrick just took the charge, and that foul will be called against McLean, and I believe that is her third personal foul. It is. It'll be the first foul called against Costat in this fourth period. Hodges takes the inbound pass, and she brings it back up the left side. She'll dribble. Kick it out to Patrick. Patrick. Looks inside, kicks it over to Willis. Willis will throw it underneath. Will throw it underneath. The basketball will belong to the Lady Pioneers on a block shot where Standridge came back down with the basketball when she shot it. And they'll just inbound on the baseline with 14 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Patrick with the basketball. She gets set to throw it in. She finds Willis. Willis over to Patrick, almost throws it away. Patrick comes back up with the ball, drives inside, kicks it out. Standridge will put up a three-point shot from the left side, and she'll bury it. Three-point bucket, puts the lead to 50-43. to North Arc with 9.05 to play in the, four, in, the rest of, in, the, in the ball game. Smith with the basketball. Over to Holly on the right side. Holly gets it back to Smith in the center. Over to McLean on the left side. McLean will dribble to the center, one dribble, one time, kick it over to Holly, into Cotton. Cotton at the free throw line, tries to back Patrick down, can't do so, kicks it out to Smith. Shot clock violation, but the rebound is going to come. The ball is going to belong to the Lady Pioneers on the shot clock violation. They're going to say it went out of bounds, but irregardless, it was the Lady Pioneers basketball. Hodges will take the inbound. Full court pressure now by the Lady Colts. Hodges with the basketball. Gets across timeline. Passes it to Patrick. Patrick on the left side will kick it back out to Standridge. Standridge puts up a 12-footer that's good. 52-43, nine-point lead. Coach for Cossetot wants his team to pick up the pace. Smith with the basketball over to Cotton. Cotton to McLean. McLean inside to Fulbright. Fulbright double teamed out to McLean. She puts up a three-point shot off the back of the iron. Standridge with the rebound. Standridge gets it to Patrick. Now Patrick will bring the ball back up the left side of the floor. She's got Hodges in the left corner. She's got George in the right corner. Now George cuts to the lane. Willis with the ball over to Patrick. Back to Standridge in the low post to Patrick. Patrick will come back out. She'll miss dribble the ball, gets it to Standridge to Willis, who puts up a three-point shot. It'll be off the back of the iron. A foul's going to be called. We'll check and see who this foul is on. It'll be against North Arc. We will see what the number is, and that looks like it's going to be on number 43, Samantha George, and that will be her third personal foul. Smith will check out, and Burns will check back in for Casata. Hernandez also back on the floor. Burns will bring this up on the right side. She tries to throw it inside. It'll go out of bounds, and it'll go out of bounds off of Cossata. No one underneath the basketball goal there. Patrick will get this into Hodges. No full court press here. Hodges brings it up the right side. She'll kick it over to Patrick in the center of the floor. Now Patrick will dribble to the right or to the left. Back over to Hodges to Willis. Patrick. Hodges gets it down to Standridge, and Standridge wants to put up a shot, but she's double teamed. Sorry, that was George. It was double teamed. She gets it over to Standridge to Willis. Willis tries to put up a shot. She'll be fouled. That'll be against Burns. Be her second personal foul. And Willis will go to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. 52-43 is your score. Make that 53-43 with 7.08 to play in the ball game. Yeah. 
Willis has the basketball for a second shot. It's up, hits the front of the iron, no good. Rebounded by McLean. Burns with the basketball. She comes back up the center of the floor. Coach wants them to pick up the pace. Over to Hernandez. Hernandez gets it to McLean in the high post. Back out to Burns. To Smith. I'm sorry, Shaw. Fulbright puts up a shot. It's no good. They're going to call a foul. It's either on George or it'll be on Standridge. We'll see. They were going to call that on Sydney Standridge. It'll be her second personal foul. Both teams with two personal fouls in this second half. Fulbright will make the first of the two free throws. She'll have one more right here. Costa will pull everybody off the line for a rebound. And Fulbright will get set for her second shot. It's up and it's in. 53-45 is your score. 6.48 to play in the ball game. Hodges passes the ball across to Willis. Back to Hodges. Over to Kaylee Patrick in the left side. She's going to dribble and penetrate. Tries to put up a shot. She'll have the ball stripped by Fulbright. A jump ball. And the ball will belong to Kostatot. Shaw will get set to throw this in. She'll get it into Burns. Burns will bring it back up the floor. In the center of the floor, she'll go left. Kicks it to Hernandez. Pass inside at the free throw line to Fulbright. I'm sorry, Tyler. Fulbright with the basketball, fakes a shot, gets it over to McLean. McLean puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebound's going to come down to Hodges, and it looks like we're going to have a foul on Shaw. Foul's going to be called against Shaw, and that'll be the third team foul for Kostatot in this third period. It'll be the second personal against Shaw in this ball game. Hodges on the left side, Patrick on the left side, Willis on the right. Down into the corner to Standridge. Standridge will be double teamed. She'll split the double team, get the ball to Hodges to Patrick, who puts up a three-point shot. She'll bury that three from the left side, and she'll push the lead to 56-45. Burns with the ball as Costa comes back down. Patrick goes for the steal, misses. Foul's going to be called as Hernandez gets to the low post, puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll be the third team foul against the Lady Pioneers in this four, uh, fourth period. Foul will be called on Standridge. It'll be her third. We've got 538 to play. Hernandez makes the first of two free throws. She'll have one more right here. She cuts it to a nine-point lead with that make, 56-47. Hodges will bring it back up the right side. Willis in the center of the floor. Patrick on the right side. Standridge in the left corner. George underneath puts it up and in on the right side. George with a layup on the right side makes it 58-47. Burns back down the floor. Holly, Reyes, Cotton, and Smith get set to check back in for Cossetot. Shaw with the basketball. She gets it out to Hernandez. Hernandez tries to dribble and penetrate. Willis went for the steal, missed. Fulbright with the basketball. Out to Shaw. Over to McLean. She fakes a three. Now she'll dribble. Has the ball partially knocked away. Another shot clock violation. This will be against Cossetot, and this is going to bring in Reyes, Cotton, Holly, and Smith. Lady Pioneers will inbound this in front of the scorer's table. They'll help do it right in front of the bench for Castleton. Hodges will take the inbound from Willis. Patrick on the left side. Willis in the right corner. Patrick to Hodges. Down to Willis. Willis looks inside. Cross court. Now they do get it in the low post to Standridge. Over to the free throw line to Willis. She puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Cotton. Out of there was Holly. Now to, over to Smith. Smith back down the floor. She's going to get inside the lane. A blocking foul is going to be called. We'll see if this is on George. This will be on Willis. It'll be the fourth team foul. It'll be the first foul called on Willis tonight. 427 to play in this ball game. <clears throat> Smith will throw this in. 
She'll get it into Holly. We've got a foul immediately. Looks like we're going to have this on Reyes. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Cossatot. We've got 426 remaining. These, these two teams will be shooting in the bonus for, e for a foul for either team. That's Reyes' first foul of the ball game for the first time she's been caught anyway. You can always say that about both teams. Hodges to Patrick. Patrick to Standridge. Standridge dribbles, kicks it to Willis. Willis inside will pick up her dribble. Jump ball is going to be called, but it'll, the possession arrow will favor the Lady Pioneers. Patrick will get set to inbound this. She'll be underneath her own basketball goal. Ball comes into Standridge, but it'll be knocked away by Cotton. Then it'll be knocked away by Hodges, picked up by Willis. Hodges with the ball on the right side. Hodges back down the floor, kicks it to Standridge. Standridge is going to spin, put up a shot, and she's going to get that over the front of the rim, 60-47. to 47. North Arc leads, 3.52 remaining in the ball game. Smith with the basketball. Smith on the right side of the floor has Holly right there, get, kicks it over to Cotton. Cotton fakes a three. Hernandez puts it up. It's an air ball. Smith with the rebound. Smith will put it back up and in on the left side. She made that look really easy. Patrick back down the floor on the right side. Patrick will kick it over to Hodges on the left. Hodges goes in the right corner to Willis. Patrick now back to Hodges in the left corner to Standridge. Standridge is going to get the ball out to Hodges. Coach wanted a, up, wanted a traveling call and didn't get it. Hodges with the shot. It's no good. Standridge with the rebound and up and in on the left side. 3.07 remaining in the ball game, 62-49. Smith to Holly. Holly puts up a three-point shot. Holly off the back of the rim. We've got a whistle on the floor. It's going to be a foul called against George, it looks like. It'll be the 15th foul. It's free throws anyway. They put the foul up as 44. Foul's going to be called against number 44, and that'll be her second personal foul. They did give North Arc the team foul, so they're going to have to fix that. Kaylee Patrick on the right side, dribbles down to the baseline, puts up a shot. It's no good. Hodges was fighting for the ball. Holly comes out of there with it. Holly back down the floor. Smith. Now Smith will put up a deep three-point shot. It's off the front of the rim. No good. Patrick with the rebound. Patrick comes back down the right side. Into the right center. Kicks it over to Willis on the left. Willis looks inside. She'll pick up her dribble or lose the ball and pick it back up and pass it to Patrick. Patrick will throw it out of bounds as she threw it way over Hodge's head. We've got a timeout on the floor, 218 remaining in this ballgame. North Arc leads 62-49. Now they've corrected the fouls on the scoreboard. Costot with five team fouls and North Arc with four team fouls. Both teams have two, uh, three timeouts remaining. We'll be right back after this timeout. All right, we're back here in action. Fulbright's checked back into the game for Cossatot. Cossatot will inbound this on the far side of the floor in the backcourt. Smith will take the inbound. She'll bring it across the timeline. Looks inside. She's got Fulbright to her left. Holly to the right. Kicks it over to Holly. Holly puts up a three-point shot off the rim. No good. Long rebound will be tipped back out to Holly, and she'll have a second chance at a three-point shot, and she'll make it. Full-court press now for Cossatot. Hodges with the ball. Over to Patrick. Patrick on the right side, back to the left to Hodges. 
across the timeline. Hodges all the way to the rim, passes it to Standridge. Standridge over to Patrick. Patrick to Willis. Patrick with the ball from Willis. Over to Standridge in the right corner. Lady Pioneers running time now. Ball will be tipped out of bounds by Fulbright. I'm sorry, Tyler. Tyler will tip that out of bounds. Kaylee Patrick gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Standridge. Standridge will put up a shot. McLean will block it. Smith with the basketball. Off the deflection. Back down the floor. She'll get behind the three-point line. Pass it to McLean. She'll put up a deep three-point shot. It'll hit the rim. Bounce high in the air. Hodges comes down with the rebound. Hodges back down the floor. Into the lane. Puts up a floater. It's no good. Rebound will come down to McLean. McLean will bring it back up the center of the floor. She's got Holly on the right. Also Smith on the right. She's got... Tyler on the left, over to Holly. She puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Rebound to Fulbright. We've got a foul called on the floor. Fulbright will be at the line to shoot. Samantha George will be called for her fourth personal foul. It'll be the fifth team foul against North Ark here tonight in the fourth period. Free throw by Fulbright is good. She'll have one more. Second free throw is up and in. Patrick will get set to throw this in. They've got the full court press on again. Back over to Patrick. Patrick in the center of the floor. Pass it down the floor to George. George on the right side of the lane will have the ball knocked away. Now the ball will be picked up by number 11, Holly, Holly back down the floor, passes it to Smith. She'll put up a three-point shot, and it'll miss everything and go out of bounds. Coach Howard has a word for the word with the ref, and the ref just, just keeps telling him he's not right. Hodges, Patrick. Patrick will bring the ball up, full-court press. Hodges on the right side. Back to Patrick in the center of the floor. She'll pass it across timeline to Willis. Back to Hodges. McLean is going to be called for reaching in, and that'll be the fifth team foul against Cossetot tonight in this fourth period. It'll be the fourth foul against McLean. Each, each team has one player now with four fouls. George has four, and so does McLean. Hodges will be at the line to shoot two free throws. Has the ball for her first free throw. It's up. Hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back, and has the right spin on it. Falls through the bottom of the net. Hodges has one more free throw, 28.8 seconds, 63-54. Make it 64-54, 10-point lead with under 30 seconds to play. Smith all the way down the floor to Holly. Holly looks at a three. Gets it back to Smith. Over to McLean. McLean looks at a three. Loses the ball temporarily. Gets it inside to Tyler. Back out to Holly. She'll put up a deep three with 15 seconds. She'll make that shot. We'll have a timeout on Cossetot. 64-57, 12.5 to play in the ball game here at the Pioneer Pavilion in Harrison, Arkansas. We'll be right back. Timeout has come to an end. We've got 12.5 seconds to play. Here comes the Lady Pioneers. They will play these last 12.0 seconds with Hodges, Patrick, George, Standridge, and Willis on the floor. Hodges will get set to throw this in. Full court press on the floor for Cossetot. Willis gets the basketball. She'll be fouled. This foul will be a reach-in foul on number 30, and that will be the... 
Sixth team foul. It'll be shooting fouls. Smith will pick up her first foul of the ball game. Willis will go to the line to shoot two free throws. First free throw is up, hits the back of the iron, rattles in, and goes through the bottom of the net. 65-57. Second shot is up. Rattles to the back of the rim to the front. No good. Rebound comes down to McLean. Holly with the basketball on the other end. Smith, McLean. McLean will put up a deep three-point shot off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound was to number 11, Holly, but no, to no avail. The Pioneers are going to pick up the win tonight, 65-57, and that will be your final score here tonight as the Pioneers will get back on the winning, winning side of things with a 65-57 victory for the Lady Pioneers and Coach Howard. I'm Robert Lyons. We'll be back with the men's game in about 20 minutes.
And we're about to get this game tipped off for the starting lineups. It'll be number 11, Nick Moy, number 23, Dylan Glover, number 21, Zion Harper, number 34, Kahari Loggins. And we didn't miss, we didn't get the first one. I think it was number five, Ryan Clemens. <clears throat> For the home team, it'll be number one, Iron Allen, 6'1 guard from Kansas City, Missouri. Jordan Turner, number two, 6'3 guard from Nixon, Missouri. Number 10, Matt Jones. He's 6'5 from Mountain Home, Arkansas. Number 22, James Parlow Jr. He's 6'1. He's a freshman from New Orleans. And Curtis Fowler, number 33, 6'6 six, six from Neelyville, Missouri. That'll be your starters here tonight on this ball game. Quavon Wally will start for Casatat as well. Fowler and number 21 Harper will open this open this game up with the opening tip. We will get started here momentarily. They've stepped they've stepped in the circle. Parlo had a big game last time, so did Jones. Iron Allen led the team down the floor each, each almost every single time. And the Pioneers will control the ball with Tip going to Jones over to Allen. Allen will get set up. Now he'll pass it off to Jones. Jones will get a screen from Fowler, get around. Harper will cut him off. He'll get it out to Allen in the, at the free throw line. He gets inside the lane, puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll go out of bounds. Last touched by Cossetot. It'll belong to the Pioneers. Allen will get set to throw this in. Allen gets the basketball, looks for Jones, throws it off of Harper, over to Fowler, puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll go out of bounds. Fowler will miss his first shot at the basket. Full court pressure now for the Pioneers. Ball will come into number 23, Dylan Glover. Now the ball's in the hands of Wally. Over to Glover. Glover will get it down the floor. It'll be tipped out of bounds. Initially tipped by Parlo, but it'll go out of bounds off of the hands of number 11, Moye. Parlo will throw this into Allen. Allen will bring it across the pioneer symbol. Goes to the right side from the left. Gets the ball back to Turner. Puts up a three, and it's good. Turner will open the game with a three-point shot, give the pioneers a 3-0 lead. Coming back down the floor is Wally. Wally with the basketball. He's looking to the left. He gets it over to Moye. Moye gets it to Glover. Glover will get the ball and dribble to the center of the floor. Passes it back out. Wally with the basketball. He's guarded by Allen. He puts up a shot. It's high. No good. Off the back of rebound. Matt Jones comes down with the rebound. Harlow with the shot on the other end. He hits a three-point shot. It's 6 nothing now. North Arc leads. Wally brings the ball back up the floor for Casata. Harper sets a screen. Wally around, gets the ball down low, and he'll get that to Loggins, and Loggins will put it up and in on the right side. Allen quickly back down the floor. 6-2, your score. Fowler with the basketball. He'll lose the ball as it's knocked out of his hands. Back out to Allen in the left corner. Allen puts up a three-point shot. Jones goes up for the rebound. Ball is going to go out of bounds. And they're going to say it was last touch by Jones. Cossetot will throw this in from the baseline. No, it'll be Allen throwing it in. It'll belong to the Pioneers. Gets it into Fowler. Fowler over to Jones. Jones will put up a 12-foot shot, and he'll make that. It'll be 8-2. to two. We've got 18-07 remaining in the first half. Wally will bring the, floor, bring the ball back up the floor, guarded by Allen. Allen, he'll get all the way to the rim, put the shot up. It'll roll all the way around the rim, and it'll fall through. Allen quickly back down the floor, puts it up and in from the right side. He goes coast to coast, 10-4. to 4. North Arc leads. 
Pioneers get help off the bench, ready to check in. Wally with the basketball. Harper's going to set a screen. Now Wally will pick up his dribble over to Glover. He'll put up a three-point shot. It's off the front of the rim, rebounded by Parlow. Parlow back down the floor. Parlow puts it up. It's no good. Fowler with the rebound. Fowler will go up for the shot. He won't make it. He'll be fouled. I believe this foul will be on Glover number 23, and it'll be the second team foul called against Cossetot in this first half. It is on Glover, and it's his first. That's the first team foul called against Cossetot. Fowler missed that. And checking in for Cossetot will be Damaji Hampton. Second free throw is missed off the back of the iron by Fowler. Glover with the ball over to Wally. Wally all the way down the lane puts the shot, goes to make a pass in the lane, and it's knocked away by the Pioneers. Defense into Glover is the is the inbound pass. Glover will have Wally on the left side, Moya on the right. Over to cross court now to Wally inside. Now the ball will be Loggins putting up a shot. Foul will be on the floor. We'll see who this foul is on. It'll be on number 10, Jones. It'll be the first team foul for the Pioneers, and it'll be Jones' first foul of this game. 16.55 to play in the first half. 10-4 to four is the score, Pioneers lead. Wally breaks and gets the inbound pass. Looks at Loggins in the high post. Gets, kicks the ball over to Moyer, to Glover, to Loggins. Loggins will put it up and in on the right side. Jones will throw this in to, to uh, traveling. Going to be called on Jones. Cal Meese now will check in for Fowler. Fowler will take a break. Wally's got the basketball. He's going to be double teamed by Parlow and Iron. Allen. Glover in the left-hand corner puts up a three-point shot that's off the rim. No good. It'll be out of bounds on the Pioneers. Ball will belong to the Colts. And they'll inbound with 16-24 remaining in the first half. Wally takes the inbound, gets it back in the right corner to Glover this time. Moye gets it inside to Loggins. Loggins tries to make a pass to Anderson. Jones will fall to the floor. A jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow will favor the Colts. After some discussion about who gets the ball, the Colts are going to inbound it. It'll be number 11, Moye, in front of the Pioneers bench. I'm going to throw this in to Wally. Anderson comes out to set a screen on Allen. Pass to Loggins. Loggins will put up a shot on the left side. It's no good. Rebounded by Cal Meese. Now down the floor with Parlow. Parlow get it into Jones. Not a good enough pass. With numbers, Loggins will put that up on the left-hand side, and Parlow will partially block it enough to make him miss. And then we've got a whistle on the floor. It's going to belong to – it'll go out of bounds. It'll belong to the Pioneers, and Parlow will throw this into Allen. Allen will bring it from the left side of the floor back over to the right, center rather. Now he goes right, gets it to Cal Meese, and he puts it up and in. Cal Meese with one dribble and, and puts it in on the right-hand side of the goal. 12-6 to six is your score, 15-30 remaining in the first half. Moye into Loggins. Loggins in the high post, spins, puts up a shot, and it's good. 12-8. to eight. Allen 
Gets the inbound. He comes up the right side of the floor. Back to Jones. Jones will stop and pop a three-point shot, and he'll drain the bottom of the basket, 15-8. to eight. Wally crosses the pioneer symbol, gets it to Moya on the right. He's got Glover on the left, passes to Glover. Moya on the left in the corner now, inside to Loggins. Anderson, now Anderson will lose the ball. Allen with the ball off the pass from Cal Meese, who stole it. Allen all the way back down the floor, kicks it to Parlo out to Turner, puts up a three. It'll be off the back of the iron. Cal Meese goes up for the rebound, gets it taken away by Anderson. Now back down the floor to Glover. He'll stop and pop a three-point shot, and he'll make it. 15 to 11. Parlo takes the inbound pass to Allen across the timeline. Inside to Cal Meese in the low post. Cal Meese backs in. Gets the ball knocked away. Wally picks it up. Wally back down the floor to Glover. Glover's going to put a layup on the rim. Miss it. He didn't get it up high enough. Over to Allen off the rebound from Parlo. Back down to Jones. Jones spins, puts up a shot, a fadeaway, and he'll miss that off the rim. Anderson comes down with that rebound over to Wally. They're going to slow things down and reset everything. Over to Moye on the right side. He's got Glover in the center of the floor. Passes it to Glover, to Moye in the left corner. Back to Glover. Glover gets it to Anderson. Anderson will be called for traveling. He slipped and took too many steps. Fowler, Tangness, and Meeks will check into the ball game. They'll check in for Cal Meese, Jones, and Parlow. Payne will also check in. He'll check in for Allen. Turner will remain on the floor. He'll get the ball into Isaiah Payne, and he'll bring it up the center of the floor and turn to the right side, set up the offense, gets it out to Turner. Turner has Tangness on the left, Fowler in the high post, gets it to Fowler. He puts it up off the backboard. It's no good, but he's fouled. Looks like this foul is going to be on Anderson. It is. It'll be the second team foul called against Casatot tonight. It'll be the first foul called against Anderson in this ball game. Meeks will go back for defense. Fowler will be at the line to shoot two. First one's up, hits the front of the rim, hits the glass, and bounces off. It's no good. He'll have one more right here. Second shot for Fowler is up off the back of the iron. Rebounded by Anderson over to Moye. Moye comes up the right side of the floor in a hurry, gets it to Wally. Wally all the way to the rim, puts it up off the glass. No good. Tipped by Anderson, no good. Now Payne will come up with the rebound. He's calling timeout as he's got the ball on the floor. It's a good timeout right there. Saves possession. 13-22 remaining in the first half. The Pioneers lead 15-11 to here at the Pioneer Pavilion in Harrison. We'll be right back after this. Tangness gets set to throw this into Payne. We've come out of the timeout. Ball will be thrown into Payne in the backcourt. He comes across on the right side. Gets the ball to Meeks in the low post. Meeks will put up a shot. It's no good. Rebound will be to number 32, Eddie Gonzalez, who's checked into the game. Also checking in is Terry Gupton, number 20, and Gupton will be fouled. It'll be the second team foul against North Ark. It'll be the first foul against number two, Jordan Turner. Ball will come into Moye. Gonzalez will set a screen. Ball will come over to Gupton. Back to Moye to Wally. Puts up a three-point shot, and he'll hit that. 15 to 14 is your score. North Ark leads by one. Payne with the ball. Gets it to Turner. Turner drives to the goal, puts up a shot. It's no good, but it'll be out of bounds off of Cossetot. Parlo's going to check in now for Turner. Payne.
Payne will get set to throw this in. Gets it in to Tangness. Tangness all the way behind the three-point line. Gets, gets it to Parlow. Gets it to Meeks. Meeks will get it back out to Parlow. Now Payne with the ball on the right side. Gets it to Meeks. Meeks inside to Fowler, who's going to put up a reverse layup on the right side, and it's good. 17-14, lead back to three. Moy- Moye with the ball. Wally. Wally in the center of the floor, out on the Pioneer symbol. Tangness guards him. Anderson tried to set a screen. Gonzalez, three-point shot. It's good from the left corner. Barlow will throw this in. We're all tied at 17. Ball will come into Payne from Parlow. Just does beat the five-second time. Payne gets it to Fowler. Fowler in the center of the floor. Whistle on the floor will be against Gonzalez. It'll be a foul. His first foul of the game, 13th foul. Checking back in will be Harper for Cossetot and Jones for Pioneers. Also checking in will be number 34, Loggins for – he'll check in for Gonzalez for Cossetot. Payne will get set to throw this in. Gets it into Jones. Jones will protect against the double team, drives the baseline, puts up a reverse layup that's no good. Ball will be tipped out to Moye. Moye back down the floor. They've got numbers. Parlow with the big block on the other end. Wally comes up with it. Now the ball down low to Harper. Harper puts up a shot. It's no good. Parlow's going to fight with him. Ball will go out of bounds, and it'll belong to Cossetot. Parlor, Parlo's 6'1", but he plays like he's 6'6". Payne will check out, and Allen will check back in. Costat gets set to throw this in from the baseline. Ball will come in to Loggins, back behind the three-point line. Cupton with the basketball. He'll get it out to Wally, over to Moya on the right side. Harper's calling for the ball inside, but he's not really open like he thinks he is. Ball goes out of bounds on a shot clock violation anyway, so it'll be a turnover back to the Pioneers. Good defense there caused that shot clock violation and the bad pass. Parlow will take the inbound, and he'll bring it up the center of the floor. Parlow likes to go left, gets a screen from Jones, back to Jones, and Jones will drive the baseline, drive, drive the lane. Parlow, or Fowler with the ball inside. Gupton fouls him. Parlow gets it up and in on the left side. 19-17, North Arc leads. Wally brings it up the center of the floor. He's got Moye on the right side, Gupton on the left. Now Gupton will come out. Wally will go down in the corner, down pass down to Harper. He'll put up a shot from about 15 feet out. It's no good. Allen with the rebound, comes back down the floor, gets it to Fowler, rewards the big fella for running the floor. Jones goes up and tries to knock the ball away from Harper. Harper over to Wally. Wally back down the floor. Wally gets it to Harper. He rewards the big fella for getting down the floor. Loggins will get the rebound and put it back up and in. 19 all. Harlow now with the basketball. Harlow puts up a shot. It's no good. Ball will be tipped out. Harper picks it up. Harper gets it to Gupton. Gupton will pull it back out and reset it. Gets the ball to Wally. Wally will have Loggins coming down the center of the floor. Now Moye and Gupton will cross to the from the right to left. Harper. Gets inside, tries to put up a shot. Fowler blocks it. Loggins with the ball. Loggins will put up a shot. Fowler will block that one. Two blocks on one possession. Now Gupton with the basketball. Fowler will go up. He'll make the foul. It's a, probably a good foul. Stops him from scoring. But Fowler will pick up that foul. It'll be the third team foul against the Pioneers. Fowler will come out. Calmees comes in. Jordan Turner or Turner comes back in, he'll come in for Tangness. Cossetot leads 21-19. Count the bucket and one. It's a first foul on Fowler. 9.48 to play in the first half now. Gupton makes the free throw. It's 22-19. Cossetot leads. Harlow with the basketball. Gets it into Cal Meese. We're going to have a push in the back on Anderson. That'll be the fourth team foul against Cossetot and the second personal foul against Anderson. 
Glover gets up to check back in for Cossatot. He'll check back in for Anderson. And he'll take a seat with two fouls. Ball comes into Jones. Loggins will hit the floor hard. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. We'll see what this foul is or who it's on. It'll be on 34 Loggins. It's the team, fifth team foul against Cossatot. And it's the first personal foul against Loggins. We're going to have another foul. This one's going to be on Glover on the inbound pass to, to uh, Jones. Six team foul, one more, and they're going to the line to shoot one and one. That's the second foul on Glover. Turner will take the inbound pass. Tries to get it into Cal Meese. It goes off his hands to Loggins. Allen back down the floor. Parlow goes up high, and he's going to trap that on the backboard. They're going to call goaltending and give him the basket, but that was an incredibly athletic move by Parlow. Allen with the basketball comes up the right side of the floor. Now he comes back to the, now he goes back to the right. Now on the sideline, gets it to Jones. Jones in the center of the floor, free throw line, kicks it out to Allen. Allen will get a player, get uh Gupton in the air. Now we're going to have a foul called underneath. Foul will be called on number 20. That'll be on Gupton. It'll be the seventh team foul. Should be the seventh team foul. Gupton will take a seat. Cal Meese gets the inbound. Cal Meese, double team, gets it out to Jones. Jones will get uh, Gonzalez in the air. Turner. Puts up a three-point shot. It's no good. Cal Meese over the back of Gonzalez. Can't get the rebound. Back down the floor. Reese with the ball. Now Cal Meese will get that rebound to Turner. Allen. Allen on the left side. Goes to the center of the floor. All the way to the rim. Puts up the shot by Jones. No good. But they're going to call Allen for charging. Allen went in. Kind of out of control, but under control at the same time. And Costop player had his feet set. That is the technical, that is the dictionary definition of a charge. Ball goes out of bounds off of the Pioneers. Parlow will knock that out of bounds. Reese was trying to make the pass to Moye. Also on the floor is Edwin Aquino. Number four for Cossatot. He'll take the ball and go down the right right side of the lane. He'll throw it in the backcourt. Parlow with the ball. Two-hand flush for Parlow. He goes up, comes down hard, but that's a two-hand flush. He'll take that slam dunk all day long, but he'll probably come out of this game because they called timeout. They're going to make him come out of this game. He'll come out and get checked out. Calmese comes out. Fowler comes back in. And number four, Polford, Trey Polford will come in. Ball will come in to number four, Aquino. Aquino's guarded by Allen. Full court coverage, more or less. Keeping his distance, but he's guarding him all the way up the floor. Ball over to Aquino. Moye Aquino back over to number three, Reese. Reese with the basketball. He'll be cut off by Fowler. Fowler will go back over to Gonzalez. He'll put up a three-point shot that's no good. Turner will have the basketball. It'll go out of the hands off of Pulford. It'll be Colts basketball on the goal on the baseline. Kino with the basketball. He's directing traffic. Now it's Reese. Reese will try to get in and penetrate. Puts up a shot. It's no good. <clears throat> and Fowler's going to be called for that foul. That'll be the second foul on Fowler here tonight. And that'll send Reese to the free throw line to shoot two. It's a fifth team, team foul against the Pioneers.
Reese puts Freese first free throw up. It's no good. Hits front of the rim and rolls rolls off. Meeks gets set to check back into the game. He'll check in for Fowler. Parlow's back up, and he's coming back in, and he'll check in for Paulford. Reese's second free throw is coming up. Up off the front of the rim to the glass. Bounces back off the left side. Jones with the rebound over to Allen. Foul's going to be called. One and one coming up here. Foul's on number three, Jordan Reese. Be his first foul, but it's a seventh team foul. Checking into the game or back into the game will be Wally. And he will check in for number 11, Nick Moya. Allen with the basketball. Got to make the first one to get the second one. And he hits the front of the rim, rolls to the back, and falls through. He hits that first free throw. Cossetot leads by two. He can cut it to one if he makes this free throw. Second free throw is up off the back of the iron. No good. Parlow comes up with it. He gets the ball back up. He gets it in. They're going to count the basket, and they're going to give him a foul. He's going to go to the line to shoot one. Foul is going to be on number 32, Eddie Gonzalez. It'll be his second personal foul. Parlow will be at the line for an and one, an old-fashioned three-point play, and a chance to give the Pioneers the lead back. Shot is up off the back of the iron, no good. Gonzalez comes down, or Loggins rather, comes down with a rebound. Wally with the ball to Aquino. Now Aquino gets it across to Loggins. Loggins will try to dribble and penetrate out to Glover. Back over to Aquino. Aquino will get to the free throw line, kick it out to Reese. Over to Glover. Glover's going to try to get in on the right side. He'll put up a shot. It's no good. Rebound will come down to Meeks. Meeks will get it out to Allen. Now Allen will get it down to Jones, and Jones will kick it out to Parlow. He'll put up a three-point shot. He'll drain that from the right side. <clears throat> Parlow drains that from the right side of the floor. 27-24, Pioneers lead on the other end. Shot by the Costa Colts is no good. Turner comes down with it, brings the ball back up the floor. Jones down the left side of the lane. He's going to put up a shot. It's no good, but he's going to be fouled. It'll be on Loggins. It'll be the eighth team foul. Going to the line to shoot two. Ninth team foul. I'm sorry. It'll be on number 23, Glover. It's his third. He'll have to be very careful or come out of this game. Harper gets set to check back in for Cossetot. He'll check back in after the first free throw. Jones's first free throw is up. And through the bottom of the net, hits the back of the iron and falls straight through. Turner will check out. Pulford back in for the Pioneers. Harper's going to come in. He'll come in for Loggins. Or I'm sorry, he'll come in for Glover. Glover will check out of this game. He has to sit down with three fouls to protect himself so he can play in the second half. Calmese gets set to check back in. Calmese will check in for Jones after Jones makes the second free throw and gives the North Ark Pioneers a five-point lead with 6.43 remaining in the first half. Full court pressure coming up. Polford. Now Parlo, Allen, they'll get the ball across to Aquino. Ball's going to be knocked away by Parlo, saved by Parlo. Over to Allen. Allen behind his back gets down the floor, gets it to Polford, to Allen, back into Calmese. Calmese will put it up and in off the glass. 31-24. 31-24. North Ark pushes the lead. We're approaching six minutes in the first half. Reese with the basketball over to Aquino on the left side. Back to Reese. Reese looks at a three-point shot, dribbles in, stops and pops from about 12 feet out good. Polford will bring this up the right side of the floor. Has Allen in the corner. Has Calmese underneath. Calmese with a reverse layup, puts it up and in. Calmese... Pushes the lead out to seven. Gupton gets set to check back in for the Colts. Loggins is going to look, appears to be going to be called for a foul, but we'll see if it may be called. No, it's going to be called on Pulford. That'll be the 
seventh team foul. First on Paulford in this game. Six team fouls, what they're going to say. Next one, they'll be shooting free throws, one and one in the half. Next one for Cossetot, and it's two, two free throws the rest of the half. Gupton back to Wally. Wally looks at a three, gets it back to Gupton in the center of the floor to Moya. Moya gets it back out to Wally. He does put up a three-point shot that's a little short. Rebounded by Harper back up and in on the left side. 33-28, five-point lead again. Allen with the ball. Meeks in the center of the floor. Gets it to Parlow on the left side. He sets a screen for Parlow. Parlow kick it out to Allen. Allen looks inside to Cal Meese. Cal Meese will back Harper down. Gets up and puts it, puts a shot up. It's no good. Cal Meese comes down with the rebound. Hillman Gupton will be tie, will tie him up, and the possession arrow is going to favor the Pioneers. Allen will get set to throw this in. He'll get it into Meeks. Meeks over to Paulford, who puts up a three-point shot, and he'll make that from the right side, from the left side, and drain the bottom of the bucket. 36-28. 4.53 to play in this first half. Wally with the basketball, guarded by Meeks and Allen. Over to Moya. Moya has Gupton on the left. He passes it down to him. Loggins comes out to set a screen. Gupton around him. Gupton around Meeks and up and in on the left side. Paulford back down the floor in a hurry. Looks inside. Can't get it to Cal Meese. Now he gets it to Meeks. Meeks gets it to Cal Meese. Cal Meese goes up and the ball hits the front of the rim and falls out of his hand. Harper with the rebound to Moya, to Wally. Wally will bring it up the right side. Come back to the center of the floor. Gets it to Loggins. Loggins will get it back to Moye on the right side. Back to Wally in the center. Gupton on the left. Loggins in the low post on the left side. Harper in the low post on the right. Gupton, three-point shot. It's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Allen. Pulford back down. Puts the shot up and in on the left, on the right-hand side. 38-30. Moye with the basketball. Gets it inside to Harper. Harper tries to get Cal Meese. He does get him in the air, and Cal Meese will be called for the foul. Harper will go to the line to shoot two. Seventh team foul against the Pioneers. Turner gets set to check back in. Payne gets set to check back in. Harper makes the first free throw. Cuts the lead to seven. Jones and Tarver will also check in. Checking out will be Meeks, Cal Meese, Allen, and Pulford. Harlow will remain on the floor. Tarver will come in, and Jones will play the low post. Harper's second free throw. Up and in. Uh, up. It hits the front of the rim. Rolls to the glass and pops out on the left. Payne comes down with that rebound. Tarver in the right corner. Dribbles inside the lane, leans in and puts up a shot. They're going to call him for traveling. Puts up the shot. He missed the shot, but he's going to be called for traveling. It'll be back to the Colts. Gupton throws it into Wally. Parlow's guarding Wally. Payne guards Gupton. A little bit of a push off, but a no good no call. Now he's going to cross Parlow and get all the way down to the rim. And a foul is going to be called. It looks like it's going to be on Tarver. Foul will be called against Tarver. It'll be his first foul. It'll be the eighth team foul and a one and one try for Wally at the free throw line. Three minutes, 13 seconds remaining in this first half. 38-31, North Arc leads. Wally's first free throw is up and in. He'll have one more right here. He's been perfect from the line tonight. And he remains that way. Jones throws this into Parlow. Parlow brings it back down the floor. Over to Jones. Jones on the right side. Will go down the right side of the lane, kick it out to Parlow. He'll put up a three-point shot. It'll hit the back of the iron, rebounded by Gupton. Gupton back down the floor. Gupton all the way to the rim, kicks it back out. Tarver will intercept the pass. 
He'll get it across court to Payne down to Turner. Turner will put up a three-point shot, and he'll bury that from the right wing. 41-33, 240 to re remaining in the first half. Wally with the ball on the other end. He's guarded by Payne. Gets it into Loggins at the free throw line. Back out to Gupton on the left side. Loggins at the free throw line wants to dribble and go down. He's going to be blocked by Tarver. Ball will go out of bounds off of the Pioneers, but that was a big block by Tarver inside, just outside the lane on the left side. Gonzalez checks back in for Cossetot, and Allen checks back in for the Pioneers. Payne will check out and take a seat. Catch his breath. Ball comes into Moya. Moya will get it out to Gupton. Back on the right side, it'll go to Wally. Now Gup, uh, Moya cuts to the free throw, or cuts in the lane. Ball's loose on the floor after he misses the shot. Allen comes up with it, spins. He's got Turner. He's going to take it all the way, put it up and in, and they're going to call a blocking foul and count the basket. Allen's going to the line for an old-fashioned three. 43-33, 2.09 remaining in the first half. That's the 10th foul against that's the tenth foul against Cossetot here in this first half. Allen makes the free throw and pushes it to an 11-point lead. 44-33. Wally to Moye. Back to Wally. Allen guards. Turner on Moye. Comes inside to Gonzalez. To Moye. All the way down and inside. Good defense. Now Jones has got his hand between the ball and Harper. They're going to call a foul. That's an unfortunate foul for Jones. He had the ball. He had he had his hand on the ball, but as Harper fought for it, Meeks and Cal Meeks will come in for Jones and Tarver. Cal Meeks and Meeks will take their post their post on the low post. I believe this is a one and one, but it may be a two shot trip. He misses the front end of the one and one. Gupton with the rebound. And Gupton is going out of bounds. I'm not sure if they're calling a foul against Cal Meese or not, but they did call it against Cal Meese. It's the 10th foul against the Pioneers. Tarver gets set to check back in for the Pioneers. That's Cal Meese's second personal foul. Both teams with 10, foul, 10 per, uh, team fouls. Gupton will be at the line to shoot two. He'll make the first one. Tarver will check back in. He'll check in for Cal Meese. Cal Meese will be called for pushing as uh, Gupton fell out of bounds. Gupton's second free throw is up and in. Meeks will inbound this to Allen. Allen will fumble the ball, gain, gain possession. Down the floor he comes guarded by Nick Moyer. Iron Allen. Out near center court. He'll get around Tarver and Meeks. Get the ball into Meeks. Now Meeks will look to pass it out. He gets it to Turner down to Parlo over to Allen as they drive the baseline. Allen back out to Tarver. Now Tarver at the just inside the three-point line gets it to Allen. He puts up the three-point shot. It's no good, and it'll go out of bounds. Shot clock violation. But either way, it was a turnover back to the Colts. Gupton gets set to throw this in. He throws it in to Moye. Over to Wally. Wally will bring it up the center of the floor from the right side or left side. Calls an offense. Calls the play. Gets the ball to Harper. Out in the high post. Now Moye with the ball. He'll drive all the way down, put up a shot. It's no good. Gupton with the rebound, kicks it out to Wally with a three-point try, and he'll drain the bottom of the bucket right there. Under a minute to play. Allen with the ball on the right side. Allen gets it over to Meeks. Meeks to Parlo. Down to Turner in the left corner. Turner puts up a three, and he drains the bottom of the bucket on the left corner. Gupton, now it's back to Wally. Wally brings it up. Allen picks him up after the timeline. Over to Gupton. Barlow guards Moye. 30 seconds in the first half. They will have to shoot before the 30 seconds is up. Wally gets it to Harper, puts up a shot. It's over the rim. Tarver with the rebound out to Allen. Allen's going to take it all the way. He'll have it punched away by Wally. Wally back down the floor. 
They've got 13 seconds out to Gonzalez. He'll put up a three. But they're going to say he stepped on the on the sideline. It'll be out of bounds against Cossetai, and the ball will go back to the Pioneers. Allen will throw this into Parlow. Parlow will get it back to Allen. Now Allen will set up the offense. Parlow with the ball. Under 10. Meeks puts up a shot. It's no good. Gupton comes up with a rebound, but it's all for nothing. 47-38 is your halftime score as North Ark leads Cossetot here at the Pioneer Pavilion in conference matchup against. But that will end the first half, and we will be back after these messages or after this.
All right, basketball fans, we're back. We're getting ready to start this second half. Pioneers will start off the second half with Parlo, Turner, Allen, Jones, and Fowler back on the floor. Colts are going to have the basketball first. It'll be Loggins, Glover, Harper, Moye, and Wally on the floor. Moye is going to get set to throw this into Wally, and Parlo and Allen will guard. In the backcourt, it'll be Wally. Wally takes the basketball, passes it to Glover on the right-hand side. Down to Harper. He puts up a shot. Foul's going to be called on Fowler, and the shot's going to count. They count the basket with only nine seconds gone out of the second half. Cal Meese now will check in. He'll check in for Fowler. Fowler will take a seat on the bench with three fouls. Harper will have one shot here. Basket is up. It's no good off the front of the iron. Jones with the rebound. Allen brings it back down the left side. Allen gets it to Jones. Loggins holding onto the jersey. Not called. Turner now with the basketball. Gets into the free throw line. Puts up the shot. It's good. 49-47. Turner hits that from the right, uh, from the left side of the free throw line. In the high post. Now Wally with the basketball. He's going to get it over. Well, he's going to come to the left side. Loggins tries to set a screen. Now he'll get it to Moye. Back out to Glover on the right side. Glover will go down the lane, kick it out to Moye. Now Moye gets into the lane, tries a hook shot that's no good. Rebound is to Cal Meese off of Harper, then knocked away by number 11 Moye. And it looks like they're going to call a foul. No, they're not going to call a foul. It's just out of bounds off of Moye. Turner gets set to throw this into Allen. Allen has it on the left side. Comes back to the center of the floor. He's got Turner cutting from the right to the left. Now he'll come right. Harlow goes into the lane. Allen with a reverse layup that's no good. Harper with the rebound. Out to Wally. Wally over to Glover. Turner goes for the steal, knocks it away momentarily. Glover picks it back up. Shot by Moye is no good. And the foul is going to be called against Harper. It'll be the first team foul against Cossetot in the second half. Each team has one. That'll be the first foul called on Harper here tonight. Turner with the basketball gets it into Allen. He'll come back up the floor. Comes to the right side. Has Carlo in the corner. Looks inside to Cal Meese. Now gets it to Jones. Jones tries to get around Loggins. Can't do it. He'll stop and put up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Harper over to Wally. Wally comes back up the left side. Now Wally wants to get it inside. Can't. Gets it to Glover on the left side. He puts up a three-point shot that's good. Turner over to Allen. Allen comes up the right side or left side. Over to Cal Meese, who puts up a three-point shot. He's going to make that three-point shot. 52-43, 18.05 to play in the ball game. Wally back across the timeline, guarded by Allen. Has Moya on the left. Gets a screen from Harper. Harper gets knocked down in the lane by Jones, and we're going to have a foul called here. Harper got knocked down, and Jones is going to be called for that foul. It'll be his third foul. Meeks will get set to check back in, presumably for Jones. Coach is arguing his point of view. Not going to change anything. It's not a shooting foul. It was on the floor. It's a second team foul against North Ark here in the second half. Now they're going to dry up the wet spot. Once they get it to where it's good, then we'll go back into action. Towels thrown out on, on the north baseline. Wally gets set to throw this in. Push off from Glover, no call. Now Glover will take the inbounds pass behind the three-point line. Over to Moye, to Loggins, back out to Wally. Wally looks inside, can't get it to Harper, gets uh, Loggins to Moye. Moye gets it to Wally back in the center of the floor. Eight to shoot. 
Glover with the basketball. He's going to put up a shot. It's going to be off the back of the iron, rebounded by Loggins. And he's going to drive and try to make a pass. It's going to go out of bounds. Harper telling him he shouldn't have made that pass. Now Turner's going to inbound for North Ark. They lead 52-43. Barlow with the basketball on the right side. Now he'll go to the center, to the left. Barlow will pull it out and reset. Gets Loggins in the air, gets it down to Allen now with the ball, gets it out to Turner. Turner gets Glover in the air. Now the ball comes down inside, and it's a shot. Cal Meese puts that up and in on the right-hand side. Wally with the basketball gets it to Harper. Harper puts up a shot that Parlow blocks. Turner comes out of there with the basketball, gets it to Allen. Allen gets in the lane, kicks it back to Cal Meese. Now Harper will come up with the ball. He'll turn his head to see what's going on, and he'll lose the ball out of bounds. It'll be Kostatot, out of bounds on Kostatot. It'll be the Pioneer basketball in front of their own bench in the corner. Allen will get set to throw this in. He'll get it into Turner. Turner will come back to the center of the floor, back to Allen on the right. Looks inside to Cal Meese. Now he's going to get it to Cal Meese. He's going to drive, put up a shot. He's not going to make it, but he's going to be fouled. And that's going to be on Harper. It'll be his second foul, both here in the second half, both early in the second half. It will send Cal Meese to the J- J- Javon Cal Meese to the free throw line, and he'll shoot two free throws. 16-35 remaining in this ball game. First free throws up and in, hits the back of the iron and falls straight through. Tangness checking in for Turner. Turner will te- check out, take a break. Carson Tangness, number 11, checks in. Cal Meese with the second free throw. It's up and in. 56-43, 16-33 remaining in this ball game. Harlow on Wally. To Loggins. Loggins guarded by Cal Meese all the way to the rim, puts it up, it rolls around and falls through. Tangness will take the inbound pass from Cal Meese. Jones up, Fowler up. They're getting ready to check back in for the Pioneers. Harlow gets it down to Meeks. Meeks will lose the ball. It'll be picked up by Loggins. Loggins back up the floor, gets it to Moye, and he's going to put up a shot that's no good. Whistle on the floor means foul. Foul's going to be called on number 11. They're going to call it on one. That'll be Allen. It'll be his second foul. First free throw by Moya is no good. Meeks and Cal Meese will check out while Jones and Fowler will check back in for the Pioneers. Fowler's going to go down as Harper runs him over. Jones with the basketball. Now they're going to have Harper. Harper was reaching out and pushing. That's going to be his third personal foul. Referee's going to come to get, bring them together and tell them, this, let's, just, let's just play basketball here. <clears throat> Fowler takes the inbound and gets punched away by Loggins. Back on the other end will be number 11, Moye. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Blocked by Fowler. Fowler, Loggins will get the rebound, and then Jones will come up with that rebound, gets it to Allen, to Parlow. Parlow gets all the way down the floor, puts it up and in. Harper or puts it up. Or Harper comes down with that rebound back to Moye. Moye's going to get it back down the floor to be blocked by Jones. Moye goes to the floor. He's still down. He's in the backcourt. Tangness all the way back down. Puts up the shot, and it's good. It's a little floater in the lane. 58-46, 12-point lead, 15-20 remaining in the ball game. Wally with the basketball. Slows things down. He's over on the right-hand side of the floor. Harper wanted to set a screen. Now Fowler will come out and guard Wally. Now Harper's going to come out, and Parlow will switch back to 
Flawley, Glover with Tangness on him. Gets it, tries to get it down to Harper, and Fowler will knock that away, but it'll go out of bounds off of the Pioneers. They're going to inbound with five seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Real close to an, another shot clock violation. Ball comes in. Wally, I don't know if they realize they have put it up. Now Glover puts it up. It's a three-pointer from the right corner. Tangness will get set to throw this in. He'll get it into Parlow on the left-hand side. Parlow comes up. He'll set the offense. Now he's going straight to the rim. And they're going to have a foul on the floor. The foul's going to be on number 34. That'll be Loggins. It'll be his second foul, fourth team foul. Payne will check in for Parlow. Turner will check in as well for Tangness. Allen will get set to throw this in. Jones and Fowler in the in the lane. Now Jones takes the inbound with a fadeaway, and he's going to knock that down from about 10 feet away. Harper with the ball gets it back to Wally on the inbound. Wally will bring it down the floor, crosses on the pioneer symbol. Now he goes to the right side. Fowler's on him. Now Jones comes over to help. Back to Moye to Wally. Fowler's still out on, Wall, on, on uh, Wally. Wally tries to dribble and penetrate, gets cut off by Fowler. Now Payne cuts off Glover, and Moye is going to go inside, and he'll be fouled by number four, Payne. Isaiah Payne will pick up that foul. Harper will check out, and Anderson will check back in for Cossetot. We got a timeout from the Pioneers. They lead 60 to 49. We've got 14-12 remaining in this ball game. Both teams have four fouls in this second half. And the Pioneers only have four timeouts left while the Colts have all six of their timeouts. We'll be back after this timeout. All right, we're back here at the game. Timeout is ending. We've got 14-12 to play. Wally gets set to throw this in. He'll get it into Glover. Back over to Moye. Moye on the left side. Back to Glover in the center of the floor on the left wing. Now down in the left corner to Wally. Wally will get it into Loggins at the free throw line. Back to Moye. Over to uh, Wally. Wally's going to try and dribble and penetrate. Kicks it out to Glover in the right corner. He's going to put up a shot. It's no good. Rebound comes down to Isaiah Payne. Payne will bring it back up the floor. He's got Turner on the right, hands it to Turner, back to Fowler. Fowler's going to dribble and penetrate, puts up the shot. It's good. They're going to count it. They're going to count that basket. That's going to make the lead grow. One shot. The foul's going to be on number four. I'm sorry. They don't have a number four on the floor. That'll be on number one, Anderson. That'll be his third foul, fifth team foul of this second half. Fowler will make the free throw, pushes the lead to 63-49. Gonzalez is going to check in for Cossetot. He'll check in for Loggins. Gupton checked back in. And Anderson checked back in. Gupton loses the ball as... Holford knocks it away. Now the ball's in the hands of Moye. Back out to Wally. Wally gets Holford in the air. Now we're going to have a foul called against the Pioneers. It'll be their fifth team foul. It'll be called against number zero. And that'll be Payne. Meeks will get set. He's checking back into this. He'll check in for Fowler. Moya is going to put up a shot, but it'll be blocked by Jones and out of bounds. Inbound from Wally. Comes out to Moya. 
Over to Gupton. Gupton on the left or right side. Paulford with the steal. Paulford back down the floor. Paulford up and puts the shot up. No good. It'll come off the backboard. Wally with the ball after Anderson rebounded that. He's on the left side. He's left wing. He has Moye in the corner. He'll drive the, and put that shot up and in on the left-hand side. Paulford to Payne. Jones threw it in. Jones with the basketball now as they cross the timeline. Jones all the way to the rim. He'll do a turnaround jumper, and it'll rim out. Meeks will tip it back out. Jones will put up another shot. It's no good. Jones will tip that up in the air. <coughs> Excuse me. Anderson finally comes down with it, gets it to Wally. Wally gets back down the floor. He's inside the lane, tries to put up a shot. That rolled around three times. A technical foul has just been called. We're going to get all this straightened out here. The personal foul and the technical foul has been called. The shot counted. They're going to count the basket, but a technical foul was called. Paulford called for the foul. Paulford picked up his third foul. And the technical was on it was on Wally. So they're gonna Turner's gonna come in and shoot the shoot the uh well I say Turner. Turner's gonna shoot the technical foul shots. He'll have two. Wally will pick up a per, another personal foul as well with that technical. Missed the first free throw. Turner will have one more right here. This has been a, a really tightly called game. And Turner will make the second free throw, push it out to a 64-53 lead. Now Wally will shoot the one free throw on the other end. He'll try to make it a try to make it a 10-point lead for the Pioneers. Fowler, Calmese, Parlo, Allen, and Tangness on the floor for the Pioneers. Mass substitutions here. 12.37 remaining in this game. And Wally's going to go to the line to shoot one. Rims out. Calmese comes down with the rebound over to Parlo. Parlo gets it down to Allen. Allen all the way to the baseline, kicks it out. It'll be out of bounds on Wally on this south end of the uh, of the Pioneer Pavilion. Allen will throw this in. He's got Parlow and Tangness. Now he tries to get it to Calmese. It'll be tipped away by Anderson. Back on the other end, Parlow's going to come down with the rebound, but Turner or Tangness got in the way and forced that shot to be missed. Out to Tangness, who puts up a three-point shot, and he drains that from the left wing with 12-13 remaining. 67-53, the Pioneers lead. Gupton on the other end tries to get around Tangness. Now Tangness will go for the, the steal, and he's going to be called for the foul. Tangness will get called for that foul. It's a one-and-one -one shot now. That's the seventh team foul against North Ark here, to, here tonight. Gupton will miss it off of the front of the rim. Fowler with the rebound. Fowler brings it back up the floor, gets it to Parlow. Parlow comes across the timeline, gets it to Payne. Payne on the left wing will put up a three-point shot. He'll miss that off of the back of the iron. Gupton will come down with that long rebound, poked away by Tangness, out to Tangness, and he'll put up the shot, and it's going to go in on the right side. 69-53. Boye just backed into Allen, no call. On the offensive end, Fowler will steal the ball as he tipped it away, but he saves it right to Boye. Parlow will take the foul. They're going to call a blocking foul against Parlow. Wally went in forcefully. Parlow didn't have his feet set. So that's going to always get called. Checking back in for the Pioneers, or getting ready to check back in for the Pioneers, will be Turner and Par uh, Jones checking in for the uh, 
Colts will be Glover and Aquino. On the floor for the Pioneers, it's Jones, Calmese, Parlow, Allen, and Turner. Free throw is good. He'll have one more. That would be Wally. On the floor for the Colts, it'll be Gonzalez, Anderson, Wally, Aquino, and Glover. Second free throw is missed. Rebound by Calmese. Parlow out of there with the basketball. Parlow comes from the left to the right. He's got Turner in the corner. He's got Allen on the left. Now he gets it to Turner. Turner will get it to Jones. Jones outside the three-point line. He'll get it over to Allen on the left side. Parlow's in the corner on the left. Allen in the lane. Puts up a floater. It's good. They're going to count the basket. He's fouled. He's going to the free throw line for an and one. 11.02 remaining, 71.54. Foul was called on Gonzalez. It'll be his third. He'll check out. Loggins will check in. Now Harper's going to get set to check back in. He'll check in for Anderson. Allen's going to have a one shot, one chance here for a free throw. Shot is up and in. Calmis goes to the floor. Kino with the basketball. Takes the inbound from Loggins. He gets cross timeline, goes to the right side, hands it off to Loggins. Loggins wants to get around Cal Meese. Loggins puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebound to Jones. Jones back down the floor in a hurry. He's looking for an outlet. Gets it over to Turner. Down to Allen. Allen will bounce the ball one time. Get it into Cal Meese. Cal Meese is going to put it up and in from the right side on the reverse layup. 74-54. All of a sudden, we've got a 20-point lead for the Pioneers. Wally... And the Colts are going to call timeout. And the Pioneers are going to go to the bench with 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining for this timeout with a 20-point lead, 74-54. We'll be right back after the timeout. And we're back. Ten minutes and 30 seconds remaining. 74-54 is your score. North Ark leads Cossetot here at the Pioneer Pavilion in Harrison, Arkansas. Cossetot will throw this ball in. Glover will get it into Aquino. Aquino will come to the center of the floor. Glover on the left. Now, Wally and Glover will cross. And Wally's on the left side. He's trying to get it to Glover or anybody right moment. Now he dribbles, penetrates, puts up a shot. It's off the back of the iron. No good. Jones will come down and clear that rebound. Out to Parlow. Parlow gets the ball back down the other end. He'll put up a shot. It's no good. And Loggins will come down with that rebound. Out to Wally. They've got numbers, three on one. And then Wally will put that up and in on the left side. Jones defended, but couldn't quite get there. Allen with the basketball. Comes across timeline, goes to the left side. Parlow and Turner to the right. Calmese comes out behind the three-point line. He'll put up a three-pointer. It's off of the rim, no good. Be rebounded by Wally and brought back down the floor. Glover from the left wing. Off the front of the iron, no good. Calmese comes down with the rebound, but he'll have it yanked away. Now we're going to have a jump ball between Calmese, Harper, and Jones. Jones and Calmese for the Pioneers. Harper was down on the, down there on top of Calmese. Now we're going to dry up the floor again. It's a jump ball, and it'll favor the Pioneers. 
Fowler's going to check back in. He'll check in for Cal Meese. Payne's going to check back in. Let's see who he checks in for. He's going to check in for Allen. So on the floor for the Pioneers, it'll be Parlo, Allen, or pa Parlo, Payne, Turner, Jones, and Fowler. Ball will be inbounded to Parlo. He'll bring it up the center of the floor. Payne on the left, Turner on the right. In the high post, he had Jones with the basketball behind the three-point line, tries to dribble down the right side of the lane. He'll get it out to Turner. Turner will kick it over to Jones on the right wing. Three-point shot, no good. Rebound Aquino. Out to Wally. Wally comes down the right side of the floor. Comes back to the center. Now he wants to – he stops at the free throw line, gets Loggins the ball, and he'll put up a hook shot that's no good. Jones will save that from going out of bounds. Get it over to Turner. Turner to Payne. Payne will be fouled by Glover. That's going to be his fourth foul of this ball game. Pushing foul as he was going for the ball, but nonetheless, it's still a foul and it's still his fourth. That'll send Payne to the free throw line to shoot a one and one. Payne lines it up, puts the shot up, no good. Fowler tips it. It's no good. Rebound comes down after two tips to Wally. Now Wally wants to take Payne all the way to the rim, and it looks like Payne's going to have committed a foul. It is a foul on Payne. Paulford and Allen both get up to check back into this game. So does Meeks. Meeks will check in for, uh, for Jones. Payne will check out. So will Turner. Wally at the line to shoot two free throws. First one's up. He'll have one more. Meeks thought that was the second free throw. Gets the ball back to the referee. Now Wally will have his second free throw. Second one is up and in. Meeks now will throw the inbound pass to Allen. Allen comes up the right side quickly. Now he'll get all the way to the rim, put the shot up and in from the left side. 76-58. Allen dribbled all the way from the right side to the left side and puts the shot up and in. Aquino. He'll get the ball to number three, Reese. Over to Glover. Glover now with the ball. Kicks it out to Reese on the left wing. He dribbles the baseline. Puts a shot up. It's no good. Harper will have the rebound taken away by Meeks or by Harper. And he'll step on the baseline. Fowler will check out. Parlow checks out. Turner and Tarver will check back in. Allen Brings the ball up, comes to the right side. He's going to have Pulford in the right corner. He's got Turner. Now he gets it to Meeks in the high post. Meeks will dribble and penetrate. Puts up a hook shot. It's no good, but he's fouled. If that's on Harper, that's going to be number four on him. They're going to call that foul on number two, Wally. That'll be his second personal foul. Meeks will make, he'll make the first free throw, push it out to a 77-58 lead. Harper comes out and Anderson comes in for the Cossatot. 7.56 to play. Meeks got, has the ball for his second free throw. Off the back of the iron, straight in the air and come down to Anderson. Anderson will get it to Wally. Wally back down the floor. He gets cut off in the lane. Then a shot by Wally will go through. 77-61, Allen gets it into Meeks. Meeks will get it to Tarver. Tarver will go up and try to do a two-handed slam. He misses that. Now back on the other end, Reese will throw it away. Throws it to Tarver. And we got a whistle on the floor. It's going to be a foul. Anderson will be called for tripping. Anderson will be called for tripping against 
from Casatot. It'll be at the fr- it'll be shot free throw shots at the other end for Tarver. He'll have two of them because of, they're in the double bonus. So Tarver will set up for two free throws. Calmisi it was set to check in. Comes back to the bench. Parlo set to check in. Tarver's first free throw is up and in. Parlo and Jones will check in for Meeks and Polford. Tarver will have one more free throw here as North Ark leads 71 to 68. 78 to 61. He'll make both of those free throws. Calmis will come in for Tarver. 79 61 is your score. 726 remaining in this ball game as the Pioneers have a commanding lead. Wally brings it up the floor, crosses the timeline. Harlow guards over and back. Or they're going to call a carry on Wally. Not sure how that's different from just about everybody does that, but they call it. Allen with the basketball. He comes to the right side. Calmese comes out. Behind the three-point line, now he comes into the free-throw line, kicks it out to Parlow. He puts up a three-point shot. It's off the back of the iron, rebounded by Anderson. Reese with the ball up the right side. Reese finds Wally. Wally will set up for a three-point shot. He'll miss that as it rims out. Paul, Paul, uh, Parlow comes out of there with the basketball. Down to Allen. Allen gets cut off. Now he'll do a fall-away jumper that's no good. Shoot, a uh, fall-away jumper, sorry. Aquino with the ball after the Anderson rebound. Aquino gets it out to Wally. Wally's guarded by Parlow. Fowler gets set to check back in for the Pioneers. Anderson puts a shot up. It's a hook shot that falls through. They're going to count the basket, and it looks like the foul is going to be on Cal Meese. It is on Cal Meese, and it's his third personal foul. We've got a timeout on the floor. 79-63 is your score. 6.33 to play here at the Pioneer Pavilion in Harrison. Back after the timeout. All right, the timeout's coming to an end. We'll have free throws, one free throw for Anderson as he gets set to shoot this free throw on the floor for the Pioneers. It'll be Jones, Fowler, Allen, Parlow, and Turner. Back to the starting five. For the Costat Coats, it'll be Moye, Glover, Anderson. He'll miss that free throw. Fowler comes down with a rebound. Wally and Aquino. Gets it back down the floor. Now Jones inside will spin, put up a shot. It'll hit the front of the rim and crawl over 81-63. Wally on the other end. Looks inside, can't get it there. Gets it to Moye on the right side. Moye tries to dribble and penetrate, gets cut off. Now Aquino will get it to Glover on the, on the right wing. Ball will be knocked away by Fowler but it'll be recovered by Anderson, gets it down to Aquino. He puts up an easy layup on the left side. Here come the Pioneers. Parlow gets it back to Allen. Allen crosses the timeline. He'll go to the right side. Jones gets sets a screen and gets almost knocked down. Over to Parlow. Aquino will be on Parlow. He gets a screen that he goes the other way with. Anderson will come down with that miss. 
He gets it over to Kino, and Kino will get it to Glover on the left wing. Down in the corner to Moye. We're going to have a shot, but a foul is going to be called against Fowler. That'll be his fourth foul. Anderson at the line to shoot free throws. First free throw is up and in. He'll have one more. Both teams are in the double bonus. Cal Meese will check in for Fowler. Tangness will check in as well for Turner. Second free throw is up. Rattles through. Allen with the inbound pass from Jones. Jo Allen all the way back down the floor on the left side. Now he's going to dribble to the baseline. Going to kick the ball out to Cal Meese. Cal Meese is looking for Jones. So was Allen. Now Allen will get inside the free throw, inside the lane. He'll put up a shot. It's going to roll around and roll off, fall off of the rim on the left side. Aquino will collect that tip, get back down the floor. Wally wants to shoot a three-pointer. Pardo's all over him like a blanket in the dead of the winter. Now they're going to call a foul, and they're going to call that on Parlo. It'll be shots for Glover. Like I said, both teams are in the double bonus. More than 20 fouls called in both halves here. 4.55 remaining. Score is 81-67. North Arc leads. First free throw by Wally's up and in. That foul by Parlo was his second. Cal Meese will check out, and Fowler will check back in. Fowler has to be careful with fouls that he has. While he gets set for a second free throw, it's up and in. Parlow brings it up the left side. Now he'll come to the right side. No one over on the right side to pass it to. Allen Jones will set a pick. Allen and... Tangness on the left side. Fowler drives down the baseline on the right side, puts it up and in. 83-69. Wally gets it back down over to Moya on the right side. Moya handed to Glover. Glover on the left wing out to Wally on the right wing. Fowler's going to block that shot. They're going to count the basket and call goaltending. They're going to call goaltending on Fowler. It was they said it was on its way down. Allen will take the inbound and come up the right side. He'll be cut off by Aquino. Gets it to Jones. Jones and Moya will collide, and a foul is going to be called. We'll see who this foul is on. Both players were going for the loose ball. It'll be called on Jones. A pushing foul. We've got a timeout on the floor. It'll be Jones's fourth foul. We've got four minutes and 12 seconds to play in this ball game. 83-71 is your score. What was a 20-point lead has been cut. And we'll be back after this timeout. All right, the timeout is over. We've got 4-12 remaining. Moye will be at the free throw line to shoot two free throws. Both teams are in the double bonus for the rest of the game. So for four, four minutes and 12 seconds, we'll see what happens.
First free throw is up off the back of the iron. Best he can do now is – best Moya can do right now is cut this back to a an 11-point lead. Second shot is up. It'll be in, it'll be through the bottom of the net. He does make it an 11-point lead, 83-72. Harper's checked back in. Jones with the basketball. Jones is going to get mugged by – Moye and Jones is going to go to the free throw line now. I guess we're going to see free throws for the rest of this game. That'll make it a lot longer. Jones will step to the line. He'll have two free throws. He'll rattle that one home. It'll be 84-72 now with 4.06 remaining in this ball game at the Pioneer Pavilion. Second shot. Up and in. He makes it an 85 to 72 ball game. Glover gets the ball in the high post on the left hand side. Down to Anderson. Anderson gets blocked by Fowler. Allen comes up with the basketball off of the block shot. He'll be picked up at the timeline by Moya. He'll knock the ball back. They're going to call over and back. That ball was tipped by Moya, but they're going to call over and back, and that'll be a turnover back to the Colts. Ref standing right there. He's got a much better view than I do, but that looked like it was tipped. Wally will take the ball in the backcourt. Now he'll come off of a screen set by Anderson. Three-point shot by Wally is good. 85-75, back to a 10-point lead. Parlow with the ball on the left side. Jones. Jones will get the ball to Allen. Allen will be guarded by Aquino. Now he'll pick up his drill. He'll dribble the ball, come back out to the center of the floor, go to the right, left side, get it to Parlow. Parlow will get it into Jones. Jones at the free throw line. He'll kick it back out to Turner, Turner will get it into Fowler. Fowler will put up the shot, but they're going to say no shot. And it's a shot clock violation with 301 remaining in the 85-75. Kino picks up the ball, gets it to Wally. Wally very intelligently. Anderson with the ball, and he gets it up and in on the right-hand side. Very intelligently, they rolled that up until the player inbounds touches it. Time doesn't start. Allen with the basketball. He'll be guarded by Moye. They're doing a little hand checking out there. Gets it to Turner. Turner gets a screen by Fowler. Puts up the shot. No good. Fowler gets the rebound. Oh, Fowler just fouled out of this game. Fowler just fouled out of this game. And Glover's about to get one, too. I believe that was the fifth foul on Fowler. They're going to separate these two teams. If that was, if Fowler had four fouls, he just fouled out. I can't remember. Their referees are going to talk about this, see if it was an intentional foul. Either way, there's going to be free throws. The other option is they could call a te double technical, one on each player for unsportsmanlike. And if that's the case and Fowler has three fouls, he'll be out of this game. Cal Meese gets up to check in. Coach for the Pioneers is getting an explanation. And we will find out what exactly is going on right here. Got a timeout on the floor. And that was Curtis Fowler's fifth foul. He will be out of this game. 
at the 224 mark. This timeout is by the Pioneers, and we're going we're gonna to take a break here for the timeout. 85 77, 224 remaining in this ballgame. Curtis Fowler just fouled out of the game here at the Pioneer Pavilion, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back here after the timeout, and now the coach for Costot wants an explanation on why it's the Pioneers basketball. Coach just got teed up. Coach for Costot just got teed up. He's got to be careful. He's still upset, and he's still talking. If he keeps talking, he'll get a double technical and get thrown out of this game with 224 remaining. He's still arguing his point, and it, it could be very simple. Turner at the line to shoot the two free throws. First one is up and in. Coach is still upset. He's at the end of the bench, now walking back. If he if he doesn't stop, he's going to get the double T. He, he got technical for throwing his clipboard down. Now he's still arguing his point. And Pioneer's going to make both of those free throws, push it back out to a 10-point lead, and they're going to have the basketball on the baseline underneath their own goal. Shot clock at 30. So that's reset. Over to Turner. Now back to Allen. Allen looks to set up the offense. Costop players were visibly upset when that technical foul was called because they knew the coach needed to calm down. 87-77. Turner's going to go from the right side to the left side. Parlo, they cleared out space for Allen. Now, Allen on the baseline is going to get it over to Parlo, but they're going to say that Allen stepped on the baseline. They're going to give the ball right back to the Costop Colts. They're going to roll the ball up. It rolls almost to mid mid court before they pick before Wally picks it up. Now they're going to call a foul against an offensive foul against Wally. They're going to call every single foul now to try and get a, get control of this game. That's five on. That's the fifth foul on number one. Number one will be Anderson. That was his fifth personal foul that they called that on. That'll bring Harper back into the game. And I believe Harper's got four fouls. May just be three. Ball comes into Parlo. Parlo will be, Gupton will be all over Parlo. Parlo will back it out now. He's out there on the Pioneer, or close to the Pioneer symbol. He'll drive down to the left side. He'll, Gupton will go for the steal. He'll miss it. Parlo will put up a shot. It'll bounce around on the rim. Harper comes down with the rebound. Wally with the pass. Wally down on the other end of the floor, tries to get in the lane, makes a pass, but it goes out of bounds off of Harper's feet. Barlow will get set to throw this in. He'll get it into Turner. Turner on the right side of the floor will get it back to Parlow on the left side. Out to Turner. Turner comes up the left side in a hurry. Now he'll pull up his dribble and be double teamed by Aquino and Gupton. Moye on Allen, Allen out there on the Pioneer symbol. Here comes Aquino to help him. Allen will get it across court to Parlo. 
Turner will shoot a three-point shot from the left corner, and he'll drain that three under a minute to play. 90 to 77 is your score. Moye puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Aquino rebounds. Aquino gets it to Harper. He puts it up. No good. Cal Meese with the rebound. Parlo on the other end. They just want to run the timeout. Now Parlo goes to the rim, puts it up and in on the left side. 92-77. Wally comes back down. We're under 30 seconds. Two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Wally's going to put up a mid-range jumper. Turner with the rebound on the air ball. He'll get it out to Parlo. Shot clock is off. Now they can run the clock out with this possession. Parlo's just going to dribble it out. The Colts are not going to challenge because it wouldn't make any sense because they're down by too big a margin. Zeros on the clock. Your final score will be 92-77. North Ark will win this ball game. And these two teams are going to meet at half court, shake hands. Coaches are shaking hands, and we're going to see sportsmanship here. Big game here tonight by several different players. Parlo with a two-hand slam. Cal Meese tried to get a two, uh, slam up and he couldn't get that down. Jones had some big moments. Turner with the three-point shot from the corners was deadly tonight. And what can you say about Fowler? He was he was a blocking machine. Him and him and Parlo both were big on the blocks tonight. So we want to make sure that all of these t- these players are recognized. We had a great women's matchup earlier tonight with Casa Todd and North Ark. North Ark came out on top there, 65-55, and North Ark will come out on top on the men's matchup, 92-77 here at the Pioneer Pavilion in North Ark. We'll be back with you next week. I'm Robert Lyons with Echo Sports, and we'll be back with you next week to help you out some more with some games.